Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your very own portfolio website in Next.js styled with Tailwind CSS. So a lot of you guys really liked my previous video on creating a portfolio. So I just wanted to create it, create an updated version for you guys to help you get a job as a junior front end web developer. So this is what we're building here, you guys. And when you see the code, you might say, Hey, this looks a lot like react JS. Yes, you're correct. That's because it is react. Next JS is just a framework built on top of react, which has some extra capabilities. Um, not which we'll be using all of them today, but just for a quick rundown, it has server side rendering. Okay. Next JS also lazy loading, loading images, which we're going to be using today. And if you don't know what lazy loading images, basically it means that your browser is only going to load, uh, whatever, whatever's visible in the browser. So if you have some images down in the footer or lower in the, in the website, it's not going to load that till it gets on screen, which greatly, greatly increases SEO. You guys, Google loves that. So increased page load speeds. So, and then also it has, um, built in client routing. So all this browser router routes that we have to do in react, forget about all that stuff. We're not going to need it. All you have to do is create a file and it's that easy to create your own route. So this is what we're building here. Like I said, styled all with tailwind CSS, our, our banner here at the top, our nice nav bar. If you scroll down, we get a little hover effect. Boom. There we go. And a nice little landing page here. And look at this, you guys, we're going to have a smooth scroll effect and there are no depend. Sorry. One dependency is react icons for some of these icons that you see, but that is it. You guys, um, everything else we're doing completely uh, custom code here. So there's our nice about section. Let's scroll, scroll down to the skills there. We have some skills, Firebase, CSS, JavaScript, react looking nice. And let's check out the project here, you guys. And these are actually all projects that I have built. Uh, I, I just released this Netflix build probably about a week ago. And if you want to see it, I'll put a link in the description below so you can see that video. And if you want to see any of these other uh, projects, I have a crypto based one that uses Firebase. Also this, uh, Zillow clone with a uh, Google maps API and a Zillow API. So you can search up uh, property listing. So super, super fun. I a lot of fun with this build. So if you want to see any of these in the little Twitch build here, and um, then we have a nice uh, contact section at the bottom here. And guys, this is all 100% mobile responsive. If I string it down for you guys, boom, check that out. Let's check out our nav bar here at the top or like check out that mobile menu guys. How clean is that? That looks good. You guys, I'm gonna show you how to build all this. You guys just tailwind CSS is all we're using here. No custom CSS. And one last thing I want to show you before we start is our um our routing here so like i said browser router no none of that uh, next.js handles all the routes for us so check this out this is going to take us to a new page here slash twitch boom look at that clean have the nice uh video or uh, sorry image in the back with a clean overlay on it link to the code to the demo and our technologies here like i said everything is 100 percent mobile responsive shrinks down uses flex then we drop down using the grid box down here so how awesome is that, you guys? I hope you like this. Um, if you want to see how I built this, I'm going to show you how to start this from the beginning. We're going to create a blank Next.js application, import Tailwind, and style everything together. So if you're ready to get started, let's jump in. All right, you guys, you ready to get started or what? Here we are in VS Code, just a blank code editor. So I'm going to go ahead and press the Control Backtick button, and I'm going to change the directory to my desktop. That's where I'm going to create this file here. And that's our first step. We're going to create our Next.js application. So if you're using, I'm going to use Yarn. If you're using NPM, that's fine too. Just interchange the two. So I'm going to say Yarn Create, and then I'm going to say Next-App, and I'm going to call this Portfolio uh, Next.js, just like that. Go ahead and press Enter. This will be a quick, quick, quick build, you guys. And uh, just real quick, uh, a lot of you guys are asking about the, the little logos I did, and I just did this one real quick in Canva. All it is is a font. Um, if you're going to be working as a front-end developer and you haven't used Canva, then I highly, highly recommend you check that out. Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. So very, very uh, quick and easy. So what I'm going to do is just drag over the folder we just created. Okay, and I'm going to shut that down there and open up the terminal again here. I'm going to say yarn dev. Okay. Or NPM dev a little bit different than the start. We're not going to say yarn start. We're going to say yarn dev because Next.js just operates a little bit differently here. And so on the left here, you see, it looks very similar to react, but there are some differences. Um, for example, we talked about the routing. So basically whenever we create a page here or, or a file inside this pages folder, that is going to be our route. So you don't have to do this browser router. We don't have to wrap anything, use routes, nothing like that. All you have to do is create a file in the pages and that is your route. How easy is that? You guys, awesome stuff. So what I'm going to do this, this little API folder here, I'm going to delete that because we're not going to be using that. So let's just go ahead and remove this. And oh, you see, so I, 
whenever you start up your, your development server here, so it's not going to automatically to start, at least for me, it doesn't. So just go to localhost 3000. I'm going to be on 3001 because my demo is on the first, it's on the uh, localhost 3000. So this is what you get right here, you guys. This is the boilerplate code, just a starter create next app right here. This is what you see. So we're going to be working inside this pages folder right here. And in this public folder is where we can add in our images. And I'm actually going to do that right now. So I'm going to create a inside the public folder. I'm going to create an assets assets folder, and I'm just going to bring over what we're going to be using today. And I'll show you real quick. So what I brought over was just this logo right here. This is what you see in our, in our nav bar. Okay. So I brought over that. Then I brought over two additional folders, uh, this skills, and these just have the little PNG files that we're going to use for our skills. Then also my project images. I just have four project images. So these are, feel free to just use your own images. Uh, when I'm done with this build, I'm going to put it on my GitHub and I'll put a link in the description. So if you want to just clone this, uh, feel free to do that. And you can use all of my images or ho however you want to do it there. So that's all we're going to use in this public uh, folder here. And then real quick, the styles, our global styles, this, this is where we're going to use all our global styling. Um, we're not going to have a lot since we're using Tailwind, which is kind of like inline class, class names. I'm going to show you how we do that. And so you can just remove this home model module. Yeah, we can just ditch that right there. So inside our pages folder here, okay, let's go in our app.js here. This is kind of how it renders out all of our components. And so in here, what we're going to do, we just delete that there. There we go. And we're going to delete all of our boilerplate code, just like that. There we go. Styles is not defined. That's okay. It's looking for some styling and it's looking for our on our index.js right here is where it imported the home module. So let's just get rid of that there. And so this head right here. And um, so if you see in our title right here has my name and that's where you can kind of change that out. So inside the head and this is imported you guys from next head. So you can just add this little head component on any of your pages to get the the title that you want for your page or you can do uh some dynamic um dynamic data in there too if you want so i'm just going to copy over this i'm just going to say clint it's my name here front end developer just like that and as you can see boom that changes the title of our page just like that super super awesome very powerful stuff you guys and how easy is this right super super easy so what we're going to want to do first is probably going to just start off with our with our nav bar okay so we're going to create just similar to react.js we're going to create another folder here called components and this is where all of our components are going to live for our project okay so for our nav bar <clears throat> we're just going to go open up uh, in here in our components folder i'm going to create a new file called oh there we go new file and i'm going to call it nav bar JSX. I'll go ahead and RAFCE. And um, so before we actually start building out our components here, what we're want to what we want to do is install Tailwind because um, we're using Tailwind to style this whole thing. So let's open up a new tab here. I'm just going to go to TailwindCSS.com. There we go. And here we go. Looking good there. So let's just click on Get Started. Okay. And then just scroll down here. Click on Framework Guides since we're using Next.js should be the first option here. So we're going to click next JS here. And the first thing it wants us to do is create our project. Okay. We've already done this. So next let's install tailwind, right? So just copy this line. Um, if you're using NPM, I'm using yarn. So I'm just going to copy this back half here. I'm just going to create another little terminal here. So I'm going to say yarn add, and then just paste that in there. Okay. And this next step here, is just copy this line NPX tailwind CSS init dash P. Go ahead and paste that in. And this is very important. You can't skip any of these steps, you guys. And what we just did with that npx command, it just created this tailwind.config file, okay? And this is very important because what we want to do in this next step over here, we just want to copy all of this here into that content array, okay? So we're just going to paste it in there just like so. Save it in the prettier extension, formats everything nice and neat for us. And then down here, okay, this uh, global CSS, and it tells you what file it's going into, right? So it basically just says copy this into your global styles. So remember, global styles here in our styles folder. And I'm just going to replace all of that with my global styling. And that's all we need to do, you guys. So uh, we're not going to see anything right now because we need to restart our server. So I'm going to go ahead and press uh, Control-C to close it down. 
I'm going to say yarn dev to start this thing back up. Okay. And I'm just going to refresh and that should be um, everything we need to do to configure our tailwind. So what we're going to want to do first, I'm going to add in some global styling and this is very, very easy to add global styling. And we add this in our global CSS. Okay. So just a few things that I'm going to do here and how you add global styles and tailwind, you just say at layer base. Okay. Then open up your, your curly brackets. Then here we can just target, um, uh, HTML elements that we want to style. So what I'm going to look here for, I'm going to say body. Okay. Body and open up our brackets. Then we say just the at sign, then apply, and then we can write out all our styles. And what I'm using, I'm gonna use background, right? I'm gonna change the color of the background. So what I'm gonna say is BG, and you can say BG red, uh, 900, 600, basically from 100 to 900, um, you can choose a color and the, the greater the number, the darker the color gets, the lighter is gonna look like a light pink. But we don't want a background of red. I want a custom uh, color here. So what you can do instead of typing out a color, you can just open up some brackets, right? You can use brackets and tailwind for custom values, whether it be a, like a hex color code, um, pixels, rem, uh, percentages, viewport heights, anything you want, just open up the brackets and you can use custom values. And what I want to say here, I'm going to be using this, this um, kind of off white cream color and it's ECF, let's see, zero F three, just like that. Boom, there we go, it looks nice. And for our text, it's gonna be like a grayish color. So I'll say text dash, okay? And this is like saying text, you could say text white, text red. And what I'm gonna say in here is, I'm gonna open up my hex code, 1F2937. And then I'm gonna say tracking wide. And what that does is just kind of spread out the text for us. So if you notice, if I hover over here, you can see a little, um, this is Tailwind IntelliSense right there. It's a plugin I highly, highly recommend you get. In fact, go over to your plugins and if you don't have it, Tailwind IntelliSense right here, you guys. And what that does, Tailwind CSS IntelliSense, you have to download this, guys, if you're gonna be using, um, if you're gonna be using Tailwind CSS, is a must have, it'll save you so much time, especially if you're learning Tailwind, because um, otherwise you have to go in here and kind of search, um, I said, Hey, how do I do background color, something like that? And you'd have to search and it gives you options, but in here it kind of tells you what you're doing and gives you uh, suggestions on what to use. So highly, highly recommend you get that. Also, if you're going to be using a prettier extension, um, basically if you saw it auto formatted, whenever we save it, highly, highly recommend the prettier extension. And then we are going to be using the react redux ES seven snippet right here just to create our functional components with just a few clicks. So highly, highly recommend you get those components right there. But back to our build, you guys. So in addition, so basically what we did to our body of our web page, we're stating that we want this to be our background color. The text is gonna be this kind of dark gray and then tracking wide. But I wanna do a few other things in here just to save some time in the long run here. Our uh, H1, I'm gonna say H2, H3, basically all of our H tags here. And uh, we're probably not gonna use all these, but just in case, what I wanna say is font bold. I want them to be bold, right? So I'm gonna say apply font bold. And you may be saying, if you're not used to Tailwind, why are you telling the H tags to be bold? They're already bold. Well, in Tailwind, what it does, it applies um, what you call base style. So basically an H1 would just look like a regular P tag, okay? But it still has the H1 uh, tag on it. So that way we can define our own, um, our, the own size of our text, if we want it to be bold, if you want it to be thin. So that is why we're adding that right there. And real quick to the H1 only, I just want to apply uh, a sizing here. So I'm gonna say text for XL and then small. This is a media query. Tailwind, you guys, is a mobile first, first approach, which basically means whenever we, we uh, apply the styles, it's gonna apply to the minimum width and then basically whatever you specify above that, it will be applied accordingly. So what we're saying here, I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. Medium text 6XL. And this is all you have to do for media queries, you guys. How easy is that? That's awesome. So what we're saying, we're saying if we use an H1 on here, we want it to be 4X. And if you see if my IntelliSense, if I hover over this, you can see text 4XL is 2.25 rem at 36 pixels, right? But once we get past the the small breakpoint, which you can see here, defaults to 640 pixels. Once we once we get past the small breakpoint, 
we want to go up to 48 pixels. And then once we get past the median breakpoint, we want to go up to 60 pixels. So that's how we're going to do uh, media queries. Very, very easy. So let's go ahead and do the H2. I want to do that one as well. And that should be about it here. So this one, I'm going to say text 3XL and then anything above small, we'll do uh, text for XL. So I have my little cheat sheet here off to the side. And then just a couple more here for our list items. For our list items, what I want to say, I just want the apply uh, cursor pointer. There we go. And then for our button, I'm going to add some styles to, to our button. There we go. And for our button, let's apply this. I want shadow dash XL. And that is, that's all you need to do to add a shadow, you guys. That is freaking awesome. That's this tailwind saves so much time. And you're really going to see how much time we save when we really jump into the coding. And then shadow gray. I want my shadow to be gray at 400. Okay. And then I'm going to say rounded XL. And the, what rounded means is the rounded quarters, like a border radius is what it is. Uh, rounded full would be a complete circle. Anything left less than that would be. Um, a rounded full, I believe, is like 50% or something like that. So, rounded, and then we went uppercase, and then BG gradient. And this is how we do gradient. It's super easy, you guys. BG gradient to right. There we go. Now, what I have to say is from, uh, see, so our color here. And you could just say blue or whatever you want to do, but I'm going to put in my custom color. And it's 5651E5. Five, five, just like that, you guys. And then we can say, I'm going to shrink this down a bit. Then, so, okay, from that to, then open up my brackets again, and I'm just going to say, I want this to be 709DFF, just like that. And I want the text to be, text to be white, just like that. Simple, you guys. That is it. So, and that's all the baseline styles that we're going to be using, actually. So, from here, we can actually go to our navbar component, and let's go ahead and start creating our, uh, our navbar. All right, so I just used RAFCE. That's the React React, uh, React Redux CS7 snippets, so we can create our functional component. And let's go ahead and style this thing. Okay, so we're gonna have um, this build. You're actually gonna use a whole lot of like really cool uh, program context concepts that are gonna help you save a lot of time. And that is my goal. I just want to help you save time and become a better developer here. So what we're gonna say here, um, this next div, we give this a class name on the outer div here, on the outermost div, we want this to be width of, um, say, we want this to be fixed, okay, because we want it to stay at, on top at all times, and we say width full, and that's the same as saying width of 100%, okay, so I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit there. So width full, okay, and the height of 20, and you see that's 80 pixels. Again, if you wanted to specify your own height, you can just open up the curly brackets and say 120 pixels, however you wanna do it but I'm gonna say height of 20, just like there. And then a shadow XL, okay? And what we're gonna do else here? I think that is gonna be it, okay? And let's just give this a Z100. Um, we're gonna to have to put some brackets here, Z100. So we want this to be um, always on top, no matter what, okay? So, and for the next one here, this next div here is we're gonna this be our container, okay? So I'm gonna say class name, we want this to be flex, justify between, okay? items whoops items center and this is how easy it is you don't have to say display flex justify content space between look this is all you have to do okay with full height full then px2 this is padding on the x-axis of two and it's not i'm going to shrink that down some it's not actually two pixels or two rem so basically tailwind goes for every multiples of four so if you were to say px4 that would be one rem and so since this is two it says 0.5 RAM or eight pixels, just like that. And then what we're gonna say, um, let's see, 2XL, we want the pixels PX to be 16, which is four RAM. And this is just a media query here, you guys. So above it goes SM for small, it goes up to medium, large, extra large, then 2XL. So that is what we want right there, you guys. Now for our, um, what we're gonna do next is our actually our image. So instead of just saying, you know, IMG like that, what we can do to incorporate the lazy loading images, all we have to do, I'm gonna go ahead and let an alt there, and all we have to do, okay, is just say image, just like that, and we need to import this from next dash, 
or sorry, next slash image. And that way we can import and utilize our lazy loading images. And also has a bunch of other features for your images as well, kind of styling them and uh, presenting them in the best aspect ratio possible. All right, so how are we gonna get this file? So we don't necessarily have to import it how we would in React import, you know, this name. And so we don't have to do any of that. Uh, in some cases, we may be doing that. But in here, what we can do is just kind of go in and find our file. And so let's say dot slash. And we remember we went to the public folder, assets, and then nav logo dot png. And we're going to get an error here. I'll show you what we're going to get. Hey, where's, oh, we need to import this first. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So and where I'm going to import this is just going to be in our... Uh, in our index folder okay so let's just put this right here nav bar and it's going to go ahead and auto import for us okay there like that so in here you have an image so must use width and height properties or layout fill so i don't really like using this layout fill um it doesn't ever seem to work at least in my experience how it i expect it to work after reading the documentation so what I'm going to do is just add in some sizes here and it's just sizing properties. So all we have to say is width and for my width, I'm going to be using uh, 125 and then the height I'm going to be using 50 just like that. And we're going to get one more error here. And that's because it says um, if using relative image, it must start with a leading slash. Okay. So all we have to do is just like that. If you're using from a URL, you don't have to do that, but it's gonna, if you're using an external image, you could have some other issues. In fact, if we just delete that, if you're using absolute, yeah, you're gonna have to basically put this in your config file, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. So here we have our logo here at the top. Next, what we need to do is add in our menu here, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna open this up. I want to make sure that's at least 768 pixels here. So let's just, I'm going to go and save that. Okay. Get it formatted. And right below the image, we're going to create a div and this is going to be our unordered list. Okay. And then in here, we're going to be using a link tag. So what we're going to use is actually a smooth scrolling, we're not using a package for this, just, uh, just some JavaScript here. So I'm just going to say a link. Okay. And this is how we do links in Next.js. So it prompts us to import from next slash link and that's what we want to do and instead of two like we'd use in react we say href okay and for now i'm just to say a slash there we're going to come back later and add a few things here once we set up our smooth scrolling whoop there we go just like that or right, so you know what let's put this in an li okay so let's just say home just like that now i'm going to go ahead and style this li and what i want to say is i want to say margin left 10 okay text small uppercase and then also want to say, give it a hover selector. Anytime we hover, let's say border dash bottom. So now where you can see it transition there, there you go. You can barely see that little border on the bottom there. And let's go ahead and copy this down. So I'm gonna hit control alt. There we go. And for here, I'm going to say, this one's going to be, let's say about, and then we'll have the skills and this one's gonna be projects. And then finally we're going to have the contact down there. So we're going to come back and add in our tags here in a little bit. Let's style this right here, our own order list, class name. And like I said, tailwind is mobile first. So what we want to do is actually hide it, right? So we're going to say hidden. Then anything above medium, we'll just display it as flex. So let's open this up a bit as I think we're below the breakpoint. Boom, right there. You're right on the edge there. Perfect. So that's it, you guys, for our nav bar on larger devices. So let's do our mobile menu next, okay? So what we're going to do is this mobile menu, so React icon, the only uh, dependency we're going to be adding to this project are the icons, right? Awesome. We're going to have a nice overlay here and then put in our logo here and our another list and some icons. So let's go ahead and do that next. So for I'm going to add a div here. Now for our icon, let's go ahead and install that. Yarn add react-icons. Just like so. Now, if you want to check out all these icons, you can go to react-icons.github.io and you can have all these uh, icons you can use. So I already know what I'm going to use though. So I'm going to use the AI outline close and the way we can do that, just say AI outline close, just like that. And we'll close that off. Now let's go ahead and copy this. We need to import it. Okay. We're going to get an error. So it's the same way we import in react. We're going to put it in some curly braces and say from react icons and that's not all we need to add a little pretext so that ai some are fa ai well, 
all different ones there. So that is how we're going to use our icon. And what we're going to say in this div here, anything above, we'll say class name, anything above medium, we want it to be hidden. And sorry, I actually want AI outline menu. So outline menu. We're going to be using both. So boom, there we go. We just need to import that one as well. We can actually import this on the same line, just like that. Okay, perfect. Now it's a little bit small, so let's uh, bump it up a little bit. A little bit. We can use uh, the React icon properties for that. All we have to say is size, and I'm going to bump this up to 25. That looks good, right there, you guys. So now it should disappear and show our menu. Perfect. That's what we want, right there, you guys. So next, what we want to do is go ahead and display our menu okay so i'm going to drop this down um, just outside of this div here should be good okay and in here this is where we're going to put our menu so let's create another div and for this div what we're going to say let me give it a class name say uh, let's not display it. yeah i want to be able to see what we're doing here so i'm going to say fixed left left zero let's say top zero width full h and we'll say screen here and i'm gonna give this a bg black 70 and there we go this is our alpha our opacity here so 70 if you say 10 be a lot lighter if you want to go 90 it'll be a lot darker so i'm gonna leave this at 70 and this is going to be our overlay right our background when we open this up this is going to be the overlay in the back so that looks nice right there. So just below that, next what we want to do is give this div. And this is going to be our actual menu, okay? I'm going to go ahead and save that so it gets nice and formatted nice and neat. So this is going to be our actual menu, right? The side drawer menu. So this also is going to be fixed. And what we're going to say is left, left, zero, top, zero. Oops, zero. And then what I say is uh, width, I want this to be, I'm going to open up our brackets, right? And I want this to be 75%, okay? on small devices, 75%, then anything above the small breakpoint, which is 640 pixels, I'm gonna say width of, and I'm gonna use 45%, keep getting that wrong there. Then anything above medium, I'm gonna say width of 45% as well. So excuse me, I want this one to be 60 on the small, and then 45% on the medium there, perfect. That's what we want right there. And then just a few more things here, I want the height to be screen and I want this background to be, I'm going to give this background color, it is going to be the ECF 0 F3, just like that. Perfect. P10 is going to say padding of 10, right? Then ease, ease in duration 500. Okay. So we have this, we're going to add in our media queries here in a little bit, but right now I just want this to display on the screen so we can actually see what we're doing. So that's all we need to do right there. And then our next, we're gonna have another div. And what we're gonna create is this kind of little top section right here, okay? And so let's create our div. And inside this div, we're gonna have another div and this class name. Um, so we're gonna have our image in here. And sorry, I'll just do the image real quick. Do our image. And this is gonna be, let's see, our source here. Our source. And what we want, dang, there we go. Let me give this alt tag too. Go ahead and close that off. So for our source, we want that same logo, right? So we're gonna go into, we're, there we go, at public, can't type here, public assets, and then we're looking for the nav logo.png. And remember to add that slash so you don't get any errors there. And we need to add in our width and height properties. So I'm gonna say width, and for this width, uh, I want this to be 87, and then I'm gonna give it a height of 35. Boom, so a little bit smaller. That looks perfect right there. And then next, I'm gonna have a, another div just below this, okay? And this is gonna be our AI outline close that we already imported, right? Make sure you do that if you didn't already. And this is gonna hang out just over here off to the side there. So let's go in and we want to give this um, this div around this image a, some class names. We want it to be flex, right? And we're gonna justify between. So I'm gonna say flex, um, and then we're going to say width full items center justify spell this right justify between and that's going to place them 
far apart. And I'm going to use this uh, extension pesticide for Chrome. Really, really cool extension there. So you kind of see the outline of your HTML elements just like that. Perfect. So that's what we want right there, you guys. Perfect. That looks lined up nice and neat. And so what we're going to do next for this outline, we don't need to do anything there. But for this div, we want to give this that cool little hovering effect, shadow effect. Now, I've been on a really, really cool, that's why I did this whole uh, build this way. I've been on like kind of this hover effect uh, kick there. I think it looks really cool. So that's what's going on there. So let's go ahead and add that in. And we're gonna put this on the div, the parent container of the icon, right? So let's just give it a class name. This is super simple in, in uh, Tailwind. So what we're gonna say here, um, let's copy this down, rounded, full, okay, shadow, shadow large and if you want you can say 2xl you can say medium but i'm gonna say shadow large here then i want the shadow to be gray at 400 p3 okay and then cursor nope not auto we want cursor to be pointer look at that you guys let's kind of refresh that so i can get rid of the pesticide there that is looking good right there you guys ah, nice nice so next let's add in a um, keep that open a little div here perfect so let's just go right, um, we're gonna put this below below that div, okay? And we'll just add another div, and this is gonna be a P tag. And in here, what we wanna say is, I wanna say, let's, if I can type here, I still have yet to get a, a boom from my microphone here. So let's build um, something legendary together. To, if I can type here, let's build something legendary together. Perfect, that looks good right there. So in this div, um, what we want to say, we want to give this class name, say border B, okay? So border bottom, and this is how we color the border, right? So border gray, and this one's going to be 300. I'm going to say MY for margin on the Y axis, right? Top and bottom. So margin Y of four. So that is looking nice there. Perfect. A little bit better there. We can come back and add some more stuff in here. I think we might need to add um, a little bit of margin elsewhere. So, but that is looking good right there, you guys. Um, Below this, below this P tag, um, you know, let's see if I want to drop this down. I just want to make sure everything sizes correctly. So, and especially if you go to inspect, we go to like a smaller device, like an iPhone, for example. Okay, I want to open this up a little bit more. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to get on this P tag here. Let's give it a class name, and I'm going to say width of 85%. Let's see how that looks. See if we can change this. The medium, medium. I'm gonna say width of 90 percent. Sorry, percent. And then anything uh, we'll say py for just a little bit extra padding. That looks good there. So let's just drop that down, and this should go up. Perfect. Good. Look at that. That is looking clean. Looking clean, you guys. All right. So just below that div, we're gonna um, kind of close this out right below here. We want to create a, another another div, and this is going to be our menu right here. Okay, so for this menu here, we're going to create another div here. For this menu, we're going to have an owner list, and then we're going to have our link with our list items. And I'm going to say link here. Boom! There we go. And list item. There we go. It's going to be home. Now for this link, I'm going to say href. Okay, remember. And it's gonna be home. And then for this list item, I wanna say here is give it a class name, py for text small. Okay, perfect. Just like that, you guys. And let's just copy this down like we did above. This one's gonna be about, this one is gonna be skills, then projects. And then at the very bottom, we're gonna have contact. There we go, perfect. Now in this, um, an order list here, let's go ahead and give it a class name. We'll just say uppercase, okay? So we want all these to be uppercase, boom, there we go. And then the parent diff, just around the unordered list, we're gonna give this some class name as well. And it's just gonna say PY4, so we get the padding of one rim on the top and bottom, there we go. And flex and flex column, just to make sure it um, displays properly there. So underneath this div, okay? So just underneath this div, we wanna create, um, <clears throat> or you know, let's see, flex, flex column, Underneath, in front of the side, where we're going to put this little div down here, if we use our passive side, just like that, boom. So I can flex and flex between there. Okay, 
So just below this unordered list, okay, but still within this div here, just below this unordered list, I'm gonna create another, another div just like that. I'm gonna give this some room, you can see what you're doing. And I'm gonna give this class name, I'm gonna say PT40, okay, if you hover, padding top 10 rem, okay? And what else we're gonna say here, for our P tag, we're gonna have a P tag, and then say let's, let's connect, just like that. And in here, let's give this class name here. What we're gonna say is uppercase tracking, we can actually say tracking widest, and that's the furthest you can spread them out up there, apart there. And text, let's say, what's our hex code here? We're gonna say, five six five one e five just like that boom there we go nice so underneath uh underneath this p tag okay we're gonna create a div and inside here we're gonna have all of our icons so what icons are we gonna use fa linked linked in like that linkedin in is what it wants to be right there so let me just copy that i'm gonna make sure this is the correct one we're gonna go ahead and import these. And since this one is FA, we actually have to put this on a different line. So I'm just gonna paste that in there from React Icons slash FA, just like that, okay? So yeah, there we go, perfect. That's what we want right there, you guys. Now let's go ahead and add our other, our other um, icons here. Before we add these uh, other icons, what we actually wanna do is surround this in a div. So let's just go ahead and pump that up right there. Go and save. And let's actually go ahead and style this so we can just save some time with our code. So on the div we just added, the parent div of our um, of our icon, what we wanna say is we're gonna say rounded full. We just wanna give it that nice hover effect, right? The shadow LG for shadow large, shadow gray 400, there we go. P-3, so we have padding of three, cursor, pointer, and then whenever we hover, give it a little space there. Whenever we hover, we're gonna scale scale and we'll say dash 105 and then we can even say we can say ease ease in duration need to add in my spaces duration 300 just like that so go ahead and save that our prettier extension should format it nice and neat for us that's what we want right there perfect now what we actually want to do is going to create some more uh let's just drop these down a little bit boom 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 okay and for the next one what we're going to use let's go ahead and say class we're going to give this parent div a flex item center justif justify between my4 and then width full and then we'll say anything above small we want a width of 80 percent just like that and i think i added an extra e perfect there we go so that is what we want right there you guys that looks good right there so let's change out these icons so for the next one we're going to be using fa github there you go go ahead and import that at the top and then this next one is going to be AI outline, uh, sorry, AI outline mail. There we go. And this one's going to be BS, sorry, BS person fill, person lines fill. We need another fill in here. I don't know why they make these icons so difficult to read. BS fill, person lines fill, that's ridiculous. Okay, so go ahead and copy that. And let's add that. We're actually gonna have that have to add that on a different line here, because it's different text there, it's BS, okay? From, we'll say react icons slash BS. Go ahead and save that. And now, there we have it. We have all of our icons, and that is displaying perfectly, just like we want it. Um, but it has no functionality. So let's go ahead and do uh, that next. We're gonna add that with the use state hook. So while we're at the top here, let's just go ahead and import use state from React, okay? And we're gonna put this inside our nav component here. So we're gonna say const and let's say nav set nav, okay? And this is just gonna be equal to use state. And we're gonna set a default value of uh, false, okay? And then here we're gonna say const and this is gonna be our handle nav function and this is going to be the function it's going to be arrow function to handle our um toggling our menu and whenever we run this function we just want to set the nav to true so how do we call this function let's go ahead and copy that 
So we're going to want to call this every time we click on the close button and this uh, bars menu over there. So let's find what comes first, our menu here. We're just going to add that to the parent container. And that's all we have to do. We just have to put it in that, we can put it in that div, you can put it on the icon. I'm going to put it on the div there. Then we need to do this exact same thing on this AI outline close. I'm going to put it on the parent container. So on click, we run this handle nav function, which changes our state to true. So we still have a couple more steps and what we actually need to do is just change our styling here. So I'm just gonna select all of that there, right? And we're actually, I think we're just gonna cut this out, okay? So let's just cut all of that out. And what we're gonna say, we're gonna replace the quotes, okay? With um, with our brackets here and we can just use JavaScript now. So we're gonna say if nav is true, we're using ternary operator here. If nav is true, let's put this back in our quotes. This is the styling we want to apply else I'm just going to leave an empty string here. So else there's going to be no styles. So there we go. And as you can see here, if we want to change this, uh, use a little Boolean value here, the or operator, ah, there you go. So, or that's the not operator. Sorry. So not now our, our state would be true. And if it's false, no background. So we need to do the same thing for this menu right here. So let's just copy that right there. In fact, I'm going to cut it. Okay open up our brackets I'm going to scroll back here and the same thing if nav is true I'm going to paste that in else I'm going to paste that in as well I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'll show you what I'm doing here so I actually want this to be left instead of zero um, or sorry that is right but when it's not true okay we want this to be we'll say negative 100%. So that way it's just way off of the screen there. Okay. So, and we'll add in a transition here. We don't need any of this code. Okay. Don't need any of that. We can get rid of all that. I'm going to in fact, leave that P there. Whoops. Jumping around on me. There we go. So let's see, um, see if it works. Hey, there we go. Just like that, you guys, but we need to add, handle nav. So what we need to do instead of true, sorry, instead of true, because that doesn't make any sense. Every time we click this, it just sets it to true. What we actually need to do is just use the, um, the not operator just like that. Okay. So now it's just going to set every time we run this function, it's just going to toggle it back and forth. So there we go. There we have it. You guys, that is looking clean. That is our nav bar. You guys look at that. Let's just take a minute to appreciate that. Right? Boom. Hey, and this, okay. So this is an issue right here. And somebody called me out on this for a previous project. They're like, Hey, how come my menu stays open? Right? Every time I scroll up the screen, that doesn't make any sense. And yes, you're right. So quick, easy fix to that. Let's go down here to our menu. So what we can say here, um, we'll just say, there it is. Um, anything above medium, just want it to hide. There we go. In fact, actually, we'll do the same thing. Actually, let's just move that right there to the parent container. Just right there. So and that should fix it. Now let's just go ahead and make sure. Yeah, there you go. So boom, and that's all you need to do there. So fixed it there for you. So that is our nav bar. And that is a good looking nav bar, by the way. Let's just make sure it looks good on mobile devices. Drop that down. We'll have a look on, uh, on an iPhone. That is looking good, you guys. Smash that like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of this. Our next um, component here that we're going to be building, I'm going to refresh that. Next component that we're building is our main page right here. So let's get on that right now. All right, you guys, so next we're gonna create our main component. And the main component is just our, our basically our hero, uh, whatever you see right there when you hit our landing page. So let's go ahead and create that component right here. It's gonna be in our components folder. Create file, and this one's gonna be main.jsx. .js works fine too. Uh, I use JSX so I can use my snippets. There we go. Or, or sorry, my uh, Emmet and HTML. So our AFCE is gonna generate our functional component here. And basically we're gonna have three divs here, okay? So div there and then a div here. And for our parent container, okay, I'm gonna drop that down. Give this a class name. I wanna say width full h screen. And h screen is the same as saying a height of 100 viewport height, just like that. And I'm gonna say text center, just like that. Then this next div is going to be our container, okay? So I'm gonna give this a 
max width of, I'm going to use our curly brackets, 1240 pixels. Now I want this to be width full, height full, and I'll say um, margin auto, MX auto, okay, P-2, I want this to be flex, justify, center, and item center, just like that, okay? Now inside this div, this div here is not going to have any class, but what we want to have is a P tag, right? And what we're doing right here is this right there, okay? And I'm just go ahead and copy that while I'm here. And what I'm going to say here, I'm gonna copy that in, save. And for this class, I'm going to give this uh, class name here in this P tag, and it's going to say uppercase. And we haven't imported yet yet, so we'll do that in just in a second here. Tracking, we'll say tracking widest text gray 600 now let's go ahead and import if i press control um sorry command p right brings up this little search dialog here and i can just look for the index just like that and we'll just import main just like that oh sorry this is the issue here we don't want um we don't want main from next document so if i go ahead and press the control space button that's what it defaults as but what we want is actually just to import it from our components so there we go. And there you can see our beautiful text right there. Perfect, perfect. All right, so next, I'm gonna go ahead and select that there because I'm being lazy. So we're gonna put this in an H1, okay? And I'm just gonna paste that in. Hey, I'm so-and-so. Hey, I'm sick. And what I'm gonna say, I'm actually gonna put this, we want that to be our special color, right? So I'm gonna put that in a span. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna say span class name and for that class name it is just going to be text uh what's our color code here It'll be hex code five six five one e five just like that and we have to close our span just like that uh oh what's going on here oh, there we go perfect now go ahead and save and that's looking good right there um we are going to need to give this H1 some styling and what's going to be PY4 and we'll say text gray 700. Whoa, 700, just like that. Perfect. Now uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy that, right? So I'm going to do another one right under that H1. I'm going to paste that and we have to go ahead and close that H1 that we just created. Okay. I'm going to save that. And then in here, this is what we're going to say here. I'm going to say, heck, I'm Clint. I'm a front end web developer. So we can just paste that in here. Boom, look at that, you guys. But instead of P, I'm gonna say PY2 on this next one there. And then next, I'm gonna give it a P tag, and I'm just gonna copy over this text here, okay? And I'm gonna paste it in here. We're gonna give a little bit of styles, okay? So class name, and what I'm gonna say is PY4, so we get padding on the Y axis, up and down, right vertical axis of four, which is one rem. And then we'll say text, gray, I wanna say 600, so it's a little bit of a color change there, just ever so slightly. Max width, I want to say, of 70% of the screen, okay? So max width of 70% of the screen, margin, auto. Boom. Let's go ahead and save that so our prettier extension will format that nice and neat for us. Now next, uh, just below this P tag, and we're still in our third div here, okay? So within here, we're going to create another div. And... Um, we're gonna hey, we're gonna say flex, okay? This is gonna be displayed flex, and what this is gonna be is just our our boxes down there, okay? So this is the container surrounding our uh, icons, right? So I'm just gonna say flex, and we're gonna get want to give this probably like a max width, okay? So uh, we'll say I'm gonna say item center, justify between, and we'll say max width of 330 pixels, okay? Margin auto then PY4 for one rim on the top and bottom. So we can't see anything yet, but what we're gonna wanna do, okay, we're gonna create our div here, and this is gonna be our icons, and my first icon, FA linked in, in, are we using that same one? Yeah, same one here. There we go, go ahead and close that. And let's go ahead and add our styling here, since we have to type on multiple lines. So for this style, we're gonna actually say the uh, same thing. So hey, let's just copy, search our nav bar and that way we can just copy this stuff in here so where are we looking at so i'm just going to copy all of that right there copy go back to our main i'm just going to paste that in there just like that so that's what we want right there uh, i'm going to give it change up a few things instead of padding three p3 i'm going to say padding six okay and i think that should be about it 
boom there there we go um we can actually change this scale i'm gonna say 110 instead of 105 so it looks just a little bit scales a little bit bigger just like that perfect and so let's just copy this down okay two three and four and so we're going to want to use our fa fa github okay make sure that imports and the next we're going to use ai outline mail there we go let's make sure that gets imported and then the bs fill person lines fill okay that is looking good and that right there you guys that is our home component let's drop this thing down make sure it displays properly on small devices i like to check as i go along iphone boom perfect and let's see our menu again man i love that menu guys smash the like button if you're liking the value you are getting here so what is our next component our next component is going to be the about section okay let's just scroll on down here who about there you go just like that perfect so um let's go ahead and knock that one out right now so I'm going to open this back up we can just close our nav bar there and i think we're done with our main so let's go into our components folder new file this one's going to be about jsx okay r a f c e and that's going to get up our our functional component okay all right so let's go ahead and import this into our index.js okay so about go ahead and import that make sure it imported it from the components folder okay Let's drop down that side menu there. So in our about section, it's gonna be really easy. I'm just gonna open this up. It's gonna be um, just a couple divs here. And it's gonna, this uh, first div is gonna span two thirds of the column and this one's gonna span the remaining one there. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So over here, let's go ahead and we're gonna have a div. This is gonna be our container. Okay, and let's go, we're gonna have two divs in here just like that okay so for this first one the outermost container we're going to say width full okay then anything above medium we're going to say height of screen make sure that's on a medium breakpoint to you guys otherwise it won't display properly we'll flex items nice and center okay and then py py of 16 okay now here this is going to be our our container here and what we want to say we want to give this a max width of 1200 1240 pixels now this is also going to be a grid and we'll say m auto first here and then anything above medium we want to display grid okay and we'll say grid columns we want three and we want a gap of eight okay grid gap of eight so for this first one this is going to be our text is going to be we give this class name we want to say column span two just like that there okay and let's go ahead and add in some of our text. So we're going to have a P tag here. So it's about. Let's say about. And then this one's going to say P tag who I am. Okay. Make that capitalized. There we go. And so this one's actually going to be an H2. Okay. Then a P tag here. And I'm just going to copy that in right here. Okay. And this is just a little quick uh, bio I wrote about myself. So, no, I mean, obviously you don't want to copy this in. You want to create uh write your own perfect that's what we want there and we'll copy that in p tag there perfect so let's go ahead and save that so the prettier extension formats that nice and neat for us and now let's open this up scroll down and there we have it and we're gonna have our image over here on the right let's just go ahead and throw our image in real quick okay and so and this is going to be our our final little span on the on the on the right there so we're going to use an image here okay and give this an alt tag and i'm actually not going to use the lazy loading images for this and that is because i'm going to use the uh unsplash um url external url which you can still do for lazy loading but if you do you're gonna have to edit the config file and i just didn't want to do that in here so um usually if you're going to put your if you're going to use make this like a little profile or picture you would likely want to uh just import it locally you know for in your in your public assets folder so that is what i'm going to do right there and um so let's go back and style this thing because that's looking that's perfect that's what we want right there now we just need some styles so i'm going to drop that down right there and for our styling okay so we're going to come to our about right there okay and what we want to do first is we want to give this some a um, give it some padding okay so i'm going to say py4 and i also want this to be uh uppercase be uppercase like that okay and i want to say um sorry i don't want the padding one for i do want uppercase though uppercase there we go i want to say text text 
text Excel, okay? Tracking, I wanna say widest, so it gets nice and spaced out there, there you go. And I'll say text, and then this is gonna be our hex code, which is 5651E5, I believe. Perfect, there we go. Now, for this H2 tag, we're just gonna say PY for us. We're gonna give the padding to that one there, okay? Then this next one, we're gonna say PY of two, okay? Then text gray 600. And this is gonna give just a little bit of contrast on, on the color there. So we can actually copy that, because it's gonna go down to these next ones as well. So class name, we'll paste that in there. This next one as well. And then this bottom, this bottom one right in there. And this one's also gonna be a little link. So we'll just say underline and then cursor pointer. And we'll come back. We're not gonna make it a link right now. We're gonna come back for that. So next what we wanna do is add this kind of like this, um, it's hard to see on, on smaller screens, but we're gonna add in this little hover box, right? So let's do that. Let's do that right now. So we're just gonna select that div there surrounding our image, okay? Class name, we're gonna say width, full height, auto, margin auto and then what we can say is a shadow excel and this is going to be a lot of the same the same uh, css that we're using throughout the throughout the build right we want to keep it nice and consistent rounded excel flex items center and then justify center and we're probably going to want to give a um a uh put ease in nice little hover effects so we'll say p4 and then uh on hover on hover, we want to scale, we'll say 105, and we can ease in with a duration, or duration 300. It's like, oh, boom, hey, there we go, perfect, perfect. That's what we want right there. Um, let's give, we're gonna have to do a little bit of styling to our actual image tag here, okay? So class name, and for our image here, what we're gonna do, just uh, minimal styles here, uh, just rounded, so we want that nice rounded edge on it right there, okay? So rounded, Excel keep it nice and consistent throughout the build. So boom, there you go. That is our about section. Very, very easy, you guys. So next, let's move on to the skills section. Boom, perfect, just like that. We're gonna have a grid here using uh, four columns here. So let's do our skills next. All right, you guys, doing our skills section next. So let's go ahead and create our component file in the components folder. And that's just gonna be skills.jsx, RFCE, to get our functional component here. And we want to add this back in here, okay, right? So skills, go ahead and import that, perfect. Now for our skills, basically we're gonna have the grid, like I said, grid system eight here with all of our skills. And these are just the images that we've already uh, imported into our, into our um, public folder here with our assets. So again, make sure you can clone these, get them from my um, GitHub that I'm gonna put in the description below. So let's get these on here right now. So skills and what I can do, perfect. So I'm gonna drop this down some. So for our skills, let's have our parent container here. We give this class name and we want this to be width, full, okay. Then anything above large this time, I'm gonna say H, screen, and then P2 for the padding, perfect. Now this next div is gonna be our container, okay. So I'm gonna say, we want this to be a max width, max width of 1240 pixels, perfect. We'll say MX auto, okay? Flex, flex column, justify, center, and then H full, right? So height of 100%. The next we're gonna have to throw in our, we're gonna do our P tag here. So, and our P tag is gonna be what, sorry, skills. And the next is gonna be what I can do, okay? So H2 is gonna be what I can do, perfect, there we go. And just below the H2, okay, we're gonna have a div, and this is gonna be our grid container, okay? So I'm gonna say class name, and this one is gonna be a grid, and then anything above medium. And by doing this, this is gonna say grid is automatically gonna be one column on small devices, and then anything above what we specify, which in, in this case is the medium, we wanna say grid columns uh, two, and then we'll say anything above large, We'll say grid columns uh, four, just like that. And let's just give this a gap of eight, perfect. Now before I go on, I'm just gonna style this here. So on this PTAC here, I wanna say text, XL, tracking, widest, and this is all the same that we're using throughout the project. So tracking widest, just like there, uppercase, 
then text we're going to use our our brackets here and there's the hex code 5651e5 i believe so perfect and then this what i can do we're just gonna give it a little bit of padding we'll say py4 perfect so next what we're going to build out is just our little box right there okay so and everything is going to be 100 percent responsive there so let's do that right here um, so for this grid, I'm going to give us some space in here so we can see what we're doing. So we're going to have a div here, okay? And let's say um, class name, we'll say P6, right? So padding is 6, which is 1.5 rim. Then we'll say shadow XL rounded, rounded XL, okay? A lot of the same stuff here. Then hover scale 105, okay? And we'll say ease in and then also duration of, nah, let's do 300, okay? So next, let's gonna have a, another div here, and we're just gonna have a, this is gonna be a, a grid as well. And so grid, grid columns two. There we go. Gap of four, and then justify, justify center and items center. Okay. Now inside here, where's we're gonna use our uh, image here? We're gonna put this in a div though. Div, and this is gonna be uh, class name margin auto. Now for our image. We're gonna use the image tag. These will be lazy loaded, okay? So make sure we import this from next slash image, right? So we use our image tag here. And let's go ahead and add our alt there. We'll just close it out. Now for our source, okay? For our source, we're actually gonna use um, our path here. So remember, we're gonna add a slash, right? For importing locally. So we're going into our public folder. Then we need to find, whoa, what happened? Public folder, then we need to find the assets, okay? And then in here, just to open this up so we can see, we're going into the assets and then skills, okay? So skills, just like that. And then this one is gonna be, um, what do we have first here? It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna keep it as HTML. So HTML, just like that, dot PNG, perfect. And we need to give this a width and height. That's what it's asking us for right there. So I'm gonna say width, okay? Width of, we'll say 64 pixels, and I'm gonna do height of the same, height 64 pixels, okay? So let's go ahead and save that and see how it's looking. Perfect, that's what we want right there. Now, after this image, because we're using, um, or sorry, after this uh, div here, because we're using the grid, so this is gonna be one, one section in our grid, right? So just after that, we're gonna have a, another div here, okay? And inside here, it's gonna say, uh, we'll say H3, and we already know it's gonna be bold, right? Since we added those styles globally. And in here, what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say flex, or actually, that'll probably be fine there. I was gonna do a little bit extra. I think that is gonna be good. Hmm. Yeah, let's just add this in here. I'm gonna say flex. Flex column items center, then justify center. So we can scoot this over a bit. I was gonna add in some extra stuff right there. It's kind of what I was doing when I originally built it, but just a standard design work. I decided to go against that. So that is perfect. That's what we want right there. Now let's go ahead and save this, okay? And for our, let's kind of see here. So right here, okay, this is what we want to be copying down. And again, I could just kind of kind of extract this and make this into individual components, but, and just pass down props, but I don't really uh, care to do that right now. So we'll say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. And let's see, have a look. So we should have all eight of these. Perfect, that's what we want right there. And so for this next one, we're gonna do it like this. We'll say C, well, I guess CSS, okay. And this should be CSS. So that we see that change, perfect. And then what we're gonna do, JavaScript, React, Tailwind, okay. So this next one, we're gonna say JavaScript. And this one, I believe this is just JavaScript. There we go. And then we're gonna do React, React. And then next one is gonna be Tailwind. And you can interchange these if you know if you have MongoDB or what you know whatever skills you have, just please add those in. And then we're going to say uh, Firebase, GitHub, and Shopify. Some Shopify development. All right. So then we'll say um, yeah, we'll say uh, we'll say Firebase. There we go. Firebase. 
GitHub. And Shopify. Let, let's see how this is looking. Perfect. That is what we want right there, you guys. Make sure this is what we want. Yes, that is looking good. Uh oh, something's going on there. Uh, looks like my Shopify. Okay. Uh, let's bring this down. This is supposed to say Shopify. And this one was GitHub, right? And it says I have the wrong thing. Sorry, GitHub one. For some reason, I put a one there. So GitHub one.png. So let's have a look at that. Perfect. That is what we want right there. Next up, you guys, next up, our projects. Nice hover effect. Uh, using the grid here again, we're going to display four projects. So let's do that one right now. All right, so for our projects, let's go ahead and create a component here. Create a component called a projects. There we go, .jsx. Now, R-A-F-C-E, and let's go ahead and import this into our index file here. Now, on our project, okay, projects. On our projects, I actually am gonna have some individual components in here, just to keep things a little bit easier. It's a little bit easier to read and follow, so. But um, we're gonna get to that in just a second. So let's go ahead and in here, okay? This is gonna be our parent container for our projects. So let's just say um, with a full, and that's all we need to do there. Next, we want to add a container, okay? And we'll say max width. So max width of, we'll say 1240 pixels. There we go. And we'll say MX auto PX2 and then PY of 16, okay? Now, and then we're gonna have our P tag in here and this is gonna say, projects just like so and then we'll have our h2 that says what i've built there we go perfect and let's do our next div here and this is going to be the container for our actual um products it, uh, projects itself so give this class name and this is going to say um sorry it's going to be a grid here grid then anything above medium because again on small devices we just want it to have one column then anything above medium we'll say grid columns two just like that with a gap of eight okay so let's i'm going to go ahead and save this here and let's style up these projects here and this is going to be the same what we've done in the past here so class name we say um text we want text to be uh, excel tracking widest okay and then we'll say uppercase and then text is going to be that five six it's a hex code here five six five one e five perfect just like that now for h2 we'll say class name and it'll just say py4 just like so perfect now um we've already imported this here and this is perfect this is what we want right here and what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna go ahead and build out the project um I'm just gonna call it a project item and then we'll kind of destructure it and kind of break it up into a smaller component here in just a minute. So let's create our div right here. And this is gonna be the parent container, right? For our project item component. And so what we wanna say over here, this is gonna be a relative, okay? We want this way relative because we're gonna have an overlay and hover functions and stuff like that. So relative, we wanna say flex, flex um, items center, okay? Justify center and we're gonna say height auto with full shadow of XL shadow shadow gray 400 perfect just like that and then we're also gonna want this to be rounded and we're gonna do our um, oh we're gonna say rounded and we want to have our a gradient again if you remember how we did that so rounded XL P P four Perfect. And then what we're going to do, uh, we're actually going to have a group. Okay. Let's just say group and I'll show you what we're going to do with that here in a minute. Then on hover, we want the BG gradient to, to right. Okay. So right, there we go from, and this is just like we did on our buttons. Okay. So in our global style sheet, so from, and we'll say F, uh, F sorry, five, six, five, one E five. Okay from two, and then that's gonna be our other hex code, which is, let's see, 709DFF, perfect. Let's go ahead and save that. I know it's kinda of jumping off the screen here, so I'm just gonna open this up if you guys need to see all of that. Whoa, it's kinda of long there. 
So relative flex, item center, justify center, height of auto, width full, shadow XL, shadow gray, 400. This is our shadow color. Rounded XL, so we have nice rounded edges, okay? Group, and I'll show you why we're gonna do that. Padding four, by the way. Then hover, this is our BG-gradient-2-R, so it's from a left to right. So from this color here, going to this color over here. So hope that makes sense there. Let's kind of see where we're going at here. So, and in here, what we're gonna say after after this uh, that parent container is here, this is gonna be our image, okay? So image, boom, there we go. Import next image, okay? Source, there we go. And we're actually gonna import this image. I'm gonna show you how we do it that way. Alt, this is gonna be a self-closing tag, perfect. So this is gonna be our, um, background image, but we're, we're going to pass through some props. So for now, I'm just going to say, um, we're going to import this, right? Import, and we'll say property IMG. And we'll just say property IMG from, we're going into our public folder. There we go. Into the assets folder. And this time we're going to go into our projects. And I believe this is just called property.jpg. And we'll plug this in here, property image. See if this is a, there we go. And you guys, whenever we're importing like so, we do not have to add the, the height and width property. So if you're wondering about that, perfect there. And um, so whenever we hover, we get this nice, um, this nice overlay. However, um, that's not quite exactly what we want because we want it to, um, we want that image to kind of be behind the overlay and we're going to use opacity for that. And that is the reason why we use that group uh, class name in there, the group and that parent diff. So for this image, it's going to be real easy. We're going to give it a class name. We want the rounded XL. First of all, so we get those nice rounded corners that you see there. And then what we're going to say, um, we're going to use our group selector, right? So on group dash hover, we want to set this opacity and I'm just going to change that to a 10. So let's see how that works. Boom, there you go. So what this saying, what the group is, we can actually group HTML elements together. So whenever we hover on this, we can just say group hover opacity 10. And you can use that not just for hover, but also other uh, selectors as well. So that is perfect what we want right there. Now we just want our text to display over that, okay? So let's do that next. And this is why we use the uh, relative uh, in here as well. So. Just below this image, we're gonna have another div here. And what we're gonna have inside this div is an H3. And this H3 is gonna have a title, which I would say property. Um, I don't even know what I called it. Probably property finder, doesn't really matter. Property, we'll say property finder. There we go. And then just below the H3, we'll have a P tag. This is a React JS project here. And we'll have a link, because so we're gonna have a link, okay href and i'm just going to leave that as a slash for now okay and we're going to say p more info link is not defined we need to import that from next link okay because remember uh next js is handling all of our routing so perfect that's what we want right there let's go ahead and give this div some class so we can display properly so for this div we want to say um basically you want to say hidden okay then group whenever we hover Whenever we hover, we're going to display block, okay? So this should still probably be off to the side. Boom, there we go. But that's what we want, okay? So next, what we want to say is absolute, okay? We want top 50%. Whoa. Top 50%, left 50%. And then we can say translate x negative, negative 50%. I want to say translate the same thing, translate Y negative 50%. And all this is you guys right here is just how we're centering stuff, uh, absolute elements. So that's how we center absolute elements with tailwind. There we go. So in here in our H3, let's give this a class name here. Boom. There we go. Class name. We want to say text to XL. Um, we already have the font bold, right? So let's say text white tracking wider there we go and text center just like so there we go perfect perfect now for our react js our p tag here we'll say class name and this is going to be uh, padding bottom of four which is one rim padding top of 2.5 rim text white and then text 
center. Okay, now for this P tag in here, it's actually gonna look kind of like, um, probably like style, like kind of similar to a button, okay? So we'll say text center P, P3, okay? Rounded, large, BG, BG white, text, gray, 700, font, bold, text, large, okay? Then cursor, pointer. Let's see how that looks, you guys. Boom, that is looking good right there. Let's open this up. That is gonna be perfect right there, awesome. So next, um, let's go ahead and just break this down a little bit. I'm gonna open this up so you can see a little bit better here so we have some more room. So what I wanna do is just break this down, right? And in here, we're gonna make this its very own component, right? So open up my side menu here. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is create another component in here. And I'm gonna call this project item.jsx, okay? R-A-F-C-E. Now let's go back to our project and I'm just gonna cut this out, right? So I'm gonna give this some space so we can actually see where it's at just so there's so, just so there is no confusion, right? So we're gonna cut that and replace that project item, import that just like so. And in here, we're just gonna paste that right there, okay? So we're gonna be passing through some images, or so, sorry, image, yes, we're gonna pass through some properties here. So let's go ahead and save that. And for this, what we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna to want to have a, uh, a title and probably an image. So I'm gonna say a title, okay? And for our title, we're actually gonna use, uh, it's gonna be a string, property, property finder, just like that. And also, we're gonna to want to have a uh, background, and this is just naming uh, properties right here that we're gonna pass down. So you can actually name these whatever you'd like. It doesn't really matter. And this is, we're gonna pass through our image. So for this one, it's going to be property image, right? And then we're gonna have a project URL. And here we're just gonna say slash property. And we're gonna create this route here in a little bit. So let's go in here. I'm gonna go ahead and save that so it formats nice and neat for us. Um, in fact, let's just go ahead and copy this down a couple of times so we get all our projects in here. So this next one we, we want to have is, uh, I'm gonna say uh, crypto app. There we go. And we're gonna want to add in, bring in our other links here, right? So let's import uh, crypto IMG, right? From public. Then we're looking for the assets and then projects and crypto.jpg. And I'm actually gonna copy that down a couple times here just to make it easy here. And this one is going to be a Netflix IMG from Netflix. And this one's gonna be um, Twitch image. There we go, okay. So now we should be able to pass these in here. Um, property image, the next one is going to be the crypto, crypto image. This one's gonna be the Netflix image, there we go. And this one's gonna be Twitch image. Okay, perfect. So getting some errors there, and that's cool. A property image is not defined, so what we need to do is go in here and basically accept these as properties, right? So, and I'm gonna go ahead and destructure this, that way we don't have to say, you know, props dot this, props dot that. So what we bring in is the title, right, background, image then also the project url perfect now in here what we can say instead of just saying back um property image we just want the background uh background img like that and then where is our title so in here instead of property finder let's delete that we'll put this in curly brackets title bring just bring in the title that we're going to pass it then we're gonna bring in the, um, we're gonna, they're all built in React.js, so we'll just leave that like so. Um, but on this P tag, more info, um, we're gonna surround this in a link here. And right here, instead of the, uh, instead of that link there, um, we'll just get rid of that. And in here, we only need one equals, we'll just pass in the project URL, okay. So that is perfect right there. Link is not defined, let's go ahead and import that. And this will actually be linking to another um, spot on the page or another route. So import this as well, next image. There we go. Let's see if we have any more errors and let's see what we're doing.
doing here? Boom, there we go. Oh, let's open this up, you guys. Boom, there we go. I'm just gonna make sure this is looking how we want it to look. And don't worry about this. We're gonna fix that little overlay, you guys. So don't worry about that. But check this out, you guys. Boom, have all our images. This is gonna route to, um, it's, these are gonna route to the specific pages is what we're gonna do here in a little bit. But first, we're gonna finish this up. Looking good, you guys. Smash the like button. You're getting some value out of this. Next, what we're gonna do is our um, our contact section down here, okay? So if you're ready to get started, let's move on to that one next. All right, guys, next up is our content component, right? The last component of our homepage before we move on to the routes, okay? So let's go into our components folder and let's create a new component here and I'm gonna call this contact.jsx, okay? RFC is gonna get our functional component and let's just go ahead and import this contact. Boom, there we go. It's imported right there, perfect. So for our contact component here, we're gonna have a class name. This is gonna be with full, right? And then anything above large, we wanna do the H dash screen, okay? Make sure you have the large um, media query selector on there as well, okay? So div here, this is gonna be our, our uh, like our container. So we're gonna have a max width of, we'll say 1240 pixels, margin auto, uh, we wanna say P, PX2, PY of 16, um, width width of full and that should be good for right there now in here we're gonna have a p tag okay and this is just gonna say contact and then under here h2 and let's say get in touch perfect okay now let's style this this p tag okay this p tag is gonna be text xl tracking widest um, uppercase just like we've done on all the others and then text we'll use that uh, kind of bluish purple color so that's going to be the 5651E5, perfect. And this H2, we'll give the padding in there. So class name, and we'll just say PY4, uh, okay? So let's go ahead and save that. Next, we're going to have this div here is going to be um, defining our grid system, right? So grid, and then what we're going to say here is uh, anything above large when the grid columns to be a five and then a gap of eight, okay? And in here, we're gonna have a, a left and then a right, just gonna make some notes here. And then on this left side, okay, on this left side div, what we're gonna have here, let's say div, it's gonna be a class name, okay, and we're gonna do some media queries right after by it, so call them span three, and then anything above large, we wanna say uh, call span two, okay? Width full, height full, shadow XL, shadow gray, 400 and then rounded XL and P dash four. Okay, perfect. Now in here, we're going to have our another div and that div is going to be class name. Anything above large, we want a P dash four and then also just a H, H full for height 100%. There we go. Now in here, we're going to have another div. It's going to be in no class name. It's going to be holding our image and we're not going to be using the lazy loading images um, for this yet. So Let's go ahead and give this class name, just rounded uh, XL, and then we'll give it a, see, hover, scale, we'll just say 105, and then ease in, ease in, and then the duration of 300, okay? Now, I'm not using the lazy loading image because I'm gonna import this uh, from Unsplash, so I'm just gonna paste in. All I did was just paste in my string there, so. If you want to import this or uh, use a local image, you just upload it into your public assets folder. That'd probably be the best way to go. So, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just importing it from uh, from Unsplash there. So we should see our image there with a nice hover effect, and we have our um, our padding container on the bottom. So I want this to actually be rounded though. So, so this is going to be our um, large, full, h full. This is going to say rounded, I believe here. So rounded. XL, let's see how that is. Oh, sorry, this one right here, rounded. I just misspelled it. Rounded, there we go, that was the wrong spot. So, everything looks good, perfect. That's what's up right there, let's open this up. Looking good, smash the like button if you feel like you're getting value out of this, it's looking good. So let's add in the text below that, okay? So I'm just gonna shrink that back down, there we go. You can see what we're doing over here. And I know this is kind of overlapping a little bit. Don't worry about it. We're going to come back and fix that uh, after we finish up this contact section. So just below that div there, we're still staying um, just outside of the image container, right? This little image container here. 
And what we're going to say, we're going to have a, another diff, and we're going to have in there an H2, okay? And this is going to say um, name here. It's going to be your name, right? And we'll give that a class name, PY2, okay? And then just under there, it's going to be front end developer, okay? And then we're going to have a, another P tag that says I am, I'm just going to copy it so I don't have to type as much. There we go. Perfect. And let's just paste that in. Boom. There we go. Looks nice. And let's give that some styling here. So class name PY4. That is looking good so far, you guys. Looking good. So just below that div, okay. Um, whoops. There we go. Sorry. At the very bottom, but still inside this, this left side, okay. Still remaining inside here. What we want to do is create another div. And in here, scroll down some so we can see. In here is where we're going to put this connect with me and then our social icons okay so in this div we're gonna have a p tag and it's gonna say connect with me there we go uh, actually we're just gonna leave the uppercase so doesn't really matter uppercase padding top eight perfect there we go now we want a div and this is gonna hold all of our icons right so let's just go into our uh, I'm gonna search up our main here okay and i'm gonna just grab all of this right here right there i'm just going to grab that and then come back in here and paste it and then for this class name okay this is right here where i'm typing don't worry about these errors this is where i'm typing this is like the container of the um of that hold on to the icons so flex items center uh, justify between and then we'll say um p p y four let's see if we that works so that we have to import these icons here um so fa linkedin let's go and bring these in import fa linkedin from react icons slash fa perfect and then what else we're bringing in here this one should be able to auto import right and i just hit the control space bar import that this one i don't think hey yeah we can perfect so let's just auto import all these perfect now let's see if we have any errors no come down to the bottom here and that's kind of what we want uh outside of our diff here so that means probably just need to shift this up one so this right here make sure i select the right ones let's just go up one tick hey there we go perfect that is what we want right there okay so let's knock out this right side of um the right side of our form we're actually where our form is okay so we're going to knock out this part right here. It is looking clean too, looking nice. Have a nice scroll to the top button there. And we're going to add in the React scroll, or sorry, the, the scrolling here in React at the very end, but not a package. We're going to do this uh, really easily without that. <clears throat> so let's look under here. We're on our right side. We'll go ahead and save it so it gets nice and formatted, okay? So on our right side, what we're going to do, bring this up to the top. Let's create our uh, div here, okay? And this div, class name, we're say call column span and this one we want to span three right width full height auto shadow xl shadow gray 400 and then rounded xl if i can spell this rounded xl and then uh, large anything above large let's say p4 padding four right cool so another diff and this one's just going to be class name that's not what we want p4 cool and then in here our form Get it nice and formatted in here let's say form okay and don't worry about that action we're not going to need any of that so in here form let's have a div and we'll give this a class name of let's see grid anything above medium okay we'll say grid grid columns two gap four and then width full py two perfect perfect okay now in here, within this diff, we're gonna have another diff. It's gonna be a class name. It's gonna be flex here, flex com. And in here, we're gonna have a label in our input, okay? So label, and don't worry about this HTML4, we're not gonna use any of that. Even if we do um, actually make this form functional, so you can actually, users could submit, or potential uh, um, employers could submit queries into our uh, portfolio here. So we're gonna say label, and in here, we're just gonna say name, and we'll say class name for the label. It's gonna say uppercase, text, small, there we go. Then PY2, perfect, okay? Now for our input, 
and this is going to be type text scroll down we can see I already pass it input text Let's see if that works perfect no name no ID don't need any of that there perfect we're gonna use a placeholder though or sorry no placeholder but let's give it a class name and we'll do that at the beginning so class name for our input we'll say border dash two okay rounded LG p3 flex and then border gray 300 let's see how it's looking here yeah not bad yeah there we go perfect that looks good that looks good <clears throat> so that's what we want there you guys let's go ahead and save this um, and I'm just gonna grab this right here okay this flex flex column I'm gonna select that and just copy it down okay I think that's what we need to do there uh, and, and this is gonna be the phone number phone number then everything else is gonna stay stand on one line and we shrink this down you guys it's all gonna just gonna go to one line but for the name and phone number it's gonna be on separate lines for now so name this one's gonna be number there we go we'll say phone number and this one i'm gonna leave this type as text for now perfect that's what we want there now <clears throat> just below this phone number you guys there we go but still within the form okay still within the form what we're going to do next is our email div okay and then so let's create another div and this is going to hold our label as well and you know what? let's just copy this because it's going to be the same same label but we're going to whoops there we go same label here but it instead it's going to say email okay and we're going to have input and i'm just going to copy over our input as well and then we can just change type to email there we go perfect now we're going to change up um change of our flex here so for this div okay that's surrounding the email we want that to span the entire the entire width of the screen right so flex flex home let's say flex flex calm py2 okay boom there we go looking nice okay so next after the email okay now after the email we're gonna have subject and then also magic the message as well so let's just copy that right there just copy it down boom and this is going to be subject and we'll just change this type back to text okay then next what we're going to have is the actual um, message area okay so i'm going to just uh, we'll just copy that down once more okay and then we'll say message and then instead of the input what we actually want to have is text area okay now let's delete the id and the name we're not going to need any of that and the columns and rows we're not going to need any of that as well but we are going to want to have a class name we'll say border border to rounded large p p3 then border gray 300 okay now we end up eh, let's add in um Let's see, we'll add in back in the, the uh, rows here. So we'll say rows 10, there we go. I think that will be good. Now let's see how this looks, boom. Guys, that is how quick you can style a form using Tailwind CSS, okay? So look at that right there. Smash that like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of this, guys. Smash the like button if you feel like you're getting some value. Let's add in our uh, button right there, okay? So we need to add in our send message button. Nice hover effect, okay. So let's add in our button right now. I'm gonna drop that down. So for our button, okay, for our buttons go right at the bottom, but still within our form, okay? So it needs to go within our form. And we're just gonna say button, um, we'll say send message. There we go. And you guys, when, whenever you use the button, you should already have the, our base styles. When we did our global styles, you should already have that background radiant from left to right, okay? And you already have that text, uppercase, stuff like that. So now all we have to say in here is um, just a few things, with full, okay? Then that's gonna spread it across the screen. P4, give it a little bit of padding, there you go. And we'll just say text gray 100. There we go, you guys, that should be it, right? Text gray 100 with four, let's say margin top. Margin on top, give it a little margin, there we go, perfect. That's what we want right there. So after this form, okay, 
we're going to go down within our container still. And here we want to add a, uh, a link, right? So we're going to have this scroll to top button. So what we're going to do is add, just add another div. Okay. Then in here, we're going to have a link that's going to have our href, right? And we're just going to have that like, just like so for now. Okay. Then in here, we're going to have a, another div and then we're going to have our icon and our icon is actually be, I'm going to just copy it over here. It's one we haven't used yet in this project. H I outline Chevron double up. Okay. So let's go ahead and import from react icons. Do you know what this is going to be after a slash? Okay. H I, there you go. So we need to import the link. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. There we go. Uh, let's see how it looks. Perfect. So let's go ahead and style this thing. So for the div just outside of the links, what we're going to want to style first. Okay. So we'll say flex justify center then py 12. So we get some nice little padding. I should pop it right there in the middle. And next, what we're going to want to do is this div right here, just surrounding, this is going to be our, um, we can actually probably just copy it from one of our last name. Let's just grab that whole thing right there. And we may want to just bump that up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good right there, actually. So perfect. That's what we want. But you know what? Let's drop this down because I'm going to make the size bigger um, on this icon. So that's going to look a little bit smaller. That's okay. But what we're going to do here, come back in here. We're going to use the size property. Okay. This is the size property of React icons. I'm just going to say 30. And then let's give this thing a class as well. So for our class name, it's going to be, uh, let's see here, margin auto I don't even need that text. Let's just give it that text color actually. So text, and this is going to be mm, five, six, five, one E five. Boom. There you go. That is looking good. You guys. So next, what I want to do is go ahead and, um, I'm going to go ahead and get the, the smooth scrolling set up. Okay. So we're gonna do that next. And then we're gonna come back and do our route. So whenever we click on a, um, our link, you see, it takes us to the page, but it says, product uh, this page cannot be found so let's go ahead and take care of that right now all right guys next up is our content component right the last component of our home page before we move on to the routes okay so let's go into our components folder and let's create a new component here and i'm going to call this contact.jsx okay rfc is going to get our functional component and let's just go ahead and import this contact boom there we go it's imported right there perfect so for our contact component here we're going to have a class name. This is going to be with full, right? Then anything above large, we want to do the H dash screen. Okay. Make sure you have the large, um, media query selector on there as well. Okay. So div here, this is going to be our, our, uh, like our container. So we're gonna have a max width of, we'll say 1240 pixels margin auto. Uh, we want to say P P X two P Y of 16, um, width width of full and that should be good right there now in here we're going to have a p tag okay and this is just going to say contact and then under here h2 and let's say get in touch perfect okay now let's style this this p tag okay this p tag is going to be text xl tracking widest um, uppercase just like we've done on all the others and then text we'll use that uh, kind of bluish purple color so that's going to be the five, six, five, one E five. Perfect. And this H two, we'll give the padding in there. So class name, and we'll just say P Y uh, four. Okay. So let's go ahead and save that. Next, we're going to have this div here is going to be um, defining our grid system, right? So grid. And then what we're going to say here is uh, anything above large when the grid columns to be a five and then a gap of eight. Okay. And in here, we're going to have a, a left and then a right. Just going to make some notes here. And then on this left side, okay, on this left side div, what we're going to have here, let's say div, it's going to be a class name, okay? And we're going to do some media queries right after by it. So call them span three. And then anything above large, we want to say uh, call span two, okay? Width full, height full, shadow XL, shadow gray. 400 and then rounded XL and P dash four. Okay. Perfect. Now in here, we're going to have our, another div and that div is going to be class name, anything above large one, a P dash four, and then also just a H H full for height, hundred percent. 
There we go. Now in here, we're going to have another div. It's going to be in no class name. It's going to be holding our image and we're not going to be using the lazy loading images um, for this yet. So let's go ahead and give this class name, just rounded uh, XL and then we'll give it a, see hover scale. We'll just say 105 and then ease in, ease in and then the duration of 300, okay? Now, I'm not using the lazy loading image because I'm gonna import this uh, from Unsplash, so I'm just gonna paste in. All I did was just paste in my string there. So if you wanna import this or uh, use a local image, you just upload it into your public assets folder. That'd probably be the best way to go. So, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just importing it from, uh, from Unsplash there. So we should see our image there with a nice hover effect and we have our, um, our padding container on the bottom. So I want this to actually be rounded though. So. So this is going to be our um, large, full, h full. This is going to say rounded, I believe here. So rounded XL. Let's see how that is. Oh, sorry, this one right here. Rounded. I just misspelled it. Rounded. There we go. It was the wrong spot. So everything looks good. Perfect. That's what's up right there. Let's open this up. Looking good. Smash the like button if you feel like you're getting value out of this. It's looking good. So let's add in the text below that. Okay. So I'm just going to shrink that back down. There we go. You can see what we're doing over here. And I know this is kind of overlapping a little bit. Don't worry about it. We're going to come back and fix that uh, after we finish up this contact section. So just below that div there, we're still staying um, just outside of the image container, right? This little image container here. And what we're going to say, we're going to have a, another div and we're going to have in there an H2. Okay. And it's going to say um, name here. It's going to be your name, right? We'll give that a class name, PY2, okay? And then just under there, it's gonna be front end developer, okay? And then we're gonna have a, another P tag that says I am, I'm just gonna copy it so I don't have to type as much. There we go, perfect. And let's just paste that in. Boom, there we go, looks nice. And let's give that some styling here. So class name, PY4. That is looking good so far, you guys, looking good. So just below that div, okay, um, whoops, there we go. Sorry, at the very bottom, but still inside this this left side, okay, still remaining inside here. What we wanna do is create another div, and in here, scroll down some so we can see, in here is where we're gonna put this connect with me and then our social icons, okay? So in this div, we're gonna have a P tag, and it's gonna say, connect with me there we go uh, actually we're just going to leave the uppercase so doesn't really matter uppercase padding top eight perfect there we go now we want a div and this is going to hold all of our icons right so let's just go into our uh, let's search up our main here okay and i'm going to just grab all of this right here right there i'm just going to grab that and then come back in here and paste it and then for this class name okay this is right here where i'm typing don't worry about these errors this is where i'm typing this is like the container of the um of that hold on to the icons so flex items center uh, justify between and then we'll say um p p y four let's see if we if that works so we have to import these icons here um so FA LinkedIn, let's go and bring these in. Import FA LinkedIn from React icons slash FA, perfect. And then what else we're we bringing in here? This one should be able to auto import, right? And I just hit the control space bar, import that. This one, I don't think, hey, yeah, we can, perfect. So let's just auto import all these, perfect. Now let's see if we have any errors, no. Come down to the bottom here. And that's kind of what we want uh, outside of our diff here. So that means probably just need to shift this up one. So this right here, make sure I select the right ones. Let's just go up one tick. Hey, there we go. Perfect. That is what we want right there. Okay. So let's knock out this right side of um, the right side of our form. We're actually where our form is. Okay. So we're gonna knock out this part right here. It is looking clean too, looking nice. Have a nice scroll to the top button there. And we're gonna add in the React scroll, or sorry, the, the scrolling here in React at the very end, but not a package. We're gonna do this uh, really easily without that. <clears throat> so let's look 
under here, we're on our right side. We'll go ahead and save it so it gets nice and formatted, okay? So on our right side, what we're gonna do, bring this up to the top. Let's create our uh, div here, okay? And this div, class name, we're say call, column span, and this one we want to span three, right? Width, full, height, auto, shadow, XL, shadow, gray, 400, and then rounded, XL, if I can spell this, rounded, XL, and then uh, large, anything above large, let's say P4, padding four, right? Cool, so another diff, and this one's just gonna be class name, that's not what we want, P4. Cool, and then in here, our form. Get it nice and formatted. In here, let's say form, okay? And don't worry about that action. We're not gonna need any of that. So in here, form, let's have a div, and we'll give this a class name of, let's see, grid. Anything above medium, okay? We'll say grid, grid, columns two, gap four, and then width full, py2, perfect, perfect, okay? Now in here, within this diff, we're gonna have another diff. It's gonna be a class name. It's gonna be flex here, flex com. And in here, we're gonna have a label in our input, okay? So label, and don't worry about this HTML4, we're not gonna use any of that. Even if we do um, actually make this form functional, so you can actually, users could submit, or potential uh, um, employers could submit queries into our uh, portfolio here. So we're gonna say label, and in here, we're just gonna say name, and we'll say class name for the label. It's gonna say uppercase, text, small, there we go. Then PY2, perfect, okay? Now for our input, and this is gonna be type text. Scroll down, we can see, did I already pass it? Input text, Let's see if that works, perfect. No name, no ID, don't need any of that there, perfect. We're gonna use a placeholder though, or sorry, no placeholder, but let's give it a class name, and we'll do that at the beginning. So class name for input, we'll say border dash two, okay? Rounded LG P3 flex and then border gray 300. Let's see how it's looking here. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, there we go, perfect. That looks good, that looks good. <clears throat> so that's what we want there, you guys. Let's go ahead and save this. Um, and I'm just gonna grab this right here, okay? This flex, flex column, I'm gonna select that and just copy it down, okay? I think that's what we need to do there. And, and this is gonna be the phone number, phone number, then everything else is gonna stay, stand on one line. And we shrink this down, you guys, it's all gonna just gonna go to one line. But for the name and phone number, it's gonna be on separate lines for now. So name, this one's gonna be number, there we go, we'll just say phone number, and this one, I'm gonna leave this type as text for now. Perfect, that's what we want there. Now, <clears throat> just below this phone number, you guys, there we go, but still within the form, okay? Still within the form. What we're gonna do next is our email div, okay? And then, so let's create another div. And this is gonna hold our label as well. And you know what, let's just copy this, because it's gonna be the same. Same label, but we're gonna, whoops. There we go same label here but it instead it's going to say email okay and we're going to have input and i'm just going to copy over our input as well and then we can just change type to email there we go perfect now we're going to change up um change of our flex here so for this div okay that's surrounding the email we want that to span the entire the entire width of the screen right so flex flex home let's say Flex, flex, calm, PY2, okay? Boom, there we go, looking nice, okay? So next, after the email, okay? And after the email, we're gonna have subject and then also magic, the message as well. So let's just copy that right there, just copy it down, boom. And this is going to be subject, and we'll just change this type back to text, okay? Then next, what we're gonna have is the actual um, message area, okay? So I'm gonna just, uh, we'll just copy that down once more, okay? And then we'll say message, and then instead of the input, what we actually wanna have is text area, okay? Now let's delete the ID and the name. We're not gonna need any of that. And the columns and rows, we're not gonna need any of that as well. 
but we are going to want to have a class name. We'll say border border to rounded large P P three, then border gray 300. Okay. Now we end up, eh, let's add in, um, let's see, we'll add in back in the, the, uh, rows here. So we'll say rows 10. There we go. I think that will be good. Now let's see how this looks. Boom. Guys, that is how quick you can style a form using Tailwind CSS. Okay. So look at that right there. Smash that like button. If you feel like you're getting some value out of this guy, smash the like button. If you feel like you're getting some value, let's add in our uh, button right there. Okay. So we need to add in our send message button. Nice hover effect. Okay, so let's add in our button right now. I'm gonna drop that down. So for our button, okay, for our buttons go right at the bottom, but still within our form, okay? So it needs to go within our form. And we're just gonna say button, um, we'll say send message. There we go. And you guys, when, whenever you use the button, you should already have the, our base styles. When we did our global styles, you should already have that background radiant from left to right, okay? And you already have that text, uppercase, stuff like that. So now all we have to say in here is um, just a few things with full, okay? Then that's gonna spread it across the screen. P4, give it a little bit of padding, there you go. And we'll just say text gray 100. There we go, you guys, that should be it, right? Text gray 100 with four, let's say mat margin top, Margin on top, give it a little margin. There we go, perfect, that's what we want right there. So after this form, okay, we're gonna go down within our container still, and here we want to add a, uh, a link, right? So we're gonna have this scroll to top button. So what we're gonna do is add, just add another div, okay? Then in here, we're gonna have a link. That's gonna have our href, right? And we're just gonna have that, like just like so, for now, okay? Then in here, we're gonna have a, another div, and then we're going to have our icon and our icon is actually be, I'm going to just copy it over here. It's one we haven't used yet in this project. H I outline Chevron double up. Okay. So let's go ahead and import from react icons. Do you know what this is going to be after a slash? Okay. H I, there you go. So we need to import the link. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. There we go. Uh, let's see how it looks. Perfect, so let's go ahead and style this thing. So for the div just outside of the links, what we're gonna wanna style first, okay? So we'll say flex, justify, center, then PY12, so we get some nice little padding. That should pop it right there in the middle. And next, what we're gonna wanna do is this div right here, just surrounding, this is gonna be our, um, we can actually probably just copy it from one of our last name. Let's just grab that whole thing right there. And we may want to just bump that up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Let's see. Yeah, that looks good right there, actually. So perfect. That's what we want. But you know what? Let's drop this down because I'm going to make the size bigger um, on this icon. So that's going to look a little bit smaller. That's okay. But we're going to do here. Come back in here. We're going to use the size property. Okay. This is the size property of React icons. I'm just going to say 30. And then let's give this thing a class as well. So for our class name, it's going to be, uh, let's see here, margin auto probably don't even need that text. Let's just give it that text color actually. So text, and this is gonna be mm, 5651E5. Boom, there you go. That is looking good, you guys. All right, you guys, so next up, what I want to take care of is the smooth scrolling, and I also want to take care of this shadow and the nav bar, right? So initially, I do not want there to be a shadow. I only want the shadow to appear whenever we scroll, okay, just like that. So let's go back into our code editor, okay? And what I want to do is we're going to add some more state, right, for our shadow. So I'm going to say const, and I'll say shadow and set shadow, just like that. Well, there we go. And that's going to be equal to use state. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it to false by default value. Now next, we're gonna use the use effect hook. Okay, so let's just go ahead and import that. Use effect, just like that, okay? So what I'm gonna say, use effect, okay? And this is gonna take in an arrow function. And I actually only want this to run one time when the component mounts, okay? So we're just gonna pass in an empty array, empty dependency array. And in here, we're gonna have a function. I'm gonna call it handle shadow. Call it whatever you'd like there. Handle shadow, it's just gonna be an arrow function, okay? Now in here, we're gonna have some logic. And basically if, what we wanna say is if window.scroll y, okay, 
let's see, let's uppercase there. Window got scroll Y is greater than or equal to 90, 90 pixels, right? What we want to do is just set that shadow, set shadow to true right here. Okay. Else if it's not right, we'll just say set shadow, set shadow false. Then just in black, just down here, just above our dependency right here. What we want to have is a window dot add event listener. Okay. And we're looking for scroll. And then whenever, whenever we do this, we want to run our handle shadow function. There we go. So that's all we need to do uh, for, for our logic, right? But now we need to just change up our, uh, our styling, right? So let's just go and select that, okay? I'm just gonna cut it out and let's just replace this with some brackets so we can write our JavaScript, right? And so what we're looking for is our state, right? So if shadow is true, which by default is false, right? It's true, we wanna show our shadow. Else, just using our ternary, ternary operator here, but we need to put this in quotes and we'll just get rid of the shadow. So let's see how that works. We should have no shadow. Then once we scroll, there goes our shadow. Perfect, that's what we want right there. And again, don't worry about this background. We're gonna come back and change that, okay? So don't worry about that. And I'm leaving it like that intentionally. So, all right, so I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do here next. But uh, next, I'd like to do the uh, the smooth scrolling, right? Okay, so let's take care of the smooth scrolling here in React, okay? <clears throat> and what we need to do here, let's just go into, let's see, our global CSS, okay? And what I want to say here, we'll say, this is only like one line of HTML we're actually going to write, right? So um, we'll say scroll behavior, change that to smooth, okay? Now... <clears throat> what we want to do here is go into our components. I'll just start here top down. So for about, we just need to give this an ID, just like that. And this is gonna be about. And our contact, let's go into the top here, give this an ID. What's going on there? <clears throat> I just jack that one up, okay. ID, and this is contact, right? And then main, okay. ID, I'm just gonna say home on this one, okay? So we're gonna skip the nav bar. Project item, forget that one. For projects, we'll do this one, okay? So ID, projects, and then our skills, ID, skills, okay? Now let's go back into our nav bar, nav bar, and I'm just gonna close others, okay? So I like to keep things nice and neat, right? So in here, we'll say home, right? Um, for this one, this about, let's give this an about, like there. And I'm just gonna do this one, be skills. This one's gonna be projects, right, of course. And contact. So let's see if this works. We haven't done this on our mobile menu yet. So skills, boom, there we go. All right, projects, there we go. Contact, looking good. Smash the like button, you guys. Smash that like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of this. Cool, there we go. And also, I'm gonna put this uh, this uh, link tag here, our image. I'm just gonna surround this in a link, href, and I'm just gonna say to home. There we go. Perfect, there we go. And we'll just bump this up, okay? I'm just gonna hold the, the alt button. Option if you're on a Mac, boom, slide that up. That is looking good right there, you guys. So next, that is our smooth scrolling. Oh, you know what, we forgot our button here at the bottom. Oh, hey, there we go, perfect, we already set it up. All right, so next, what I want to do is, uh, so we're gonna add our routes, okay? So we talked about this in Next.js, we don't have to worry about the ra um, React Router DOM or anything like that, browser router, none of that, okay? So what we're gonna do, <clears throat> What we're gonna do is just to create our route, right? Is just create a new file in our pages. And that's all you need to do, okay? So what I wanna do for this for this project, I'm gonna have four additional pages, right? So, and those are gonna be my four projects. So I'm gonna have the property page, this crypto page, Netflix page, and then also a Twitch page, okay? So let's go in here and to our uh, pages folder, right? I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call this property dot jsx okay just like that r-a-f-c-e okay it's going to generate our functional component and now what we're going to do here basically we're just going to build out our just build out our page right 
and we're not going to be passing through properties or anything like that. So it's going to be pretty easy, right? And so now <clears throat> let's go into our, let's just go into our projects real quick, right? Or sorry, project, uh, projects. Yeah, that's what I want to do. And in here, property, okay. And that's our project URL. So now that we created our property route in there, we should be able, we actually don't even need that to be open. We should be able, and real quick, before I forget, these aren't gonna work properly, right? So we need to go back and add those in. And we also want this bar to close, but real quick, I just wanna show you, once we click on this URL, because we're already passing the property, it should take us to a property page, but we're gonna get, um, there we go, just an empty property right there, okay? That is all you need to do. That's how easy it is to create a route in Next.js. So, but like I said, before I forget, uh, let's look at our mobile menu here, okay? I'm gonna drop that down. And on our mobile menu, a couple of problems I saw here. Uh, when I click on projects, done scroll down to projects, nor contact, nor does this uh, does this drawer close. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute. So in our nav bar, let's go down here. And basically we're just gonna do the same thing for our mobile menu. Down here is our mobile menu, okay? And again, let's just, we'll wrap this as well. Link, href, put this our homepage. And we'll just throw our image in there again. Boom, there we go. All right, perfect, perfect. Okay, no errors. Now, for our home, here we go. So, for our home, we just wanna say home. We'll keep that like so. Now, for about, let's add in our about. And we'll do our skills, okay? And projects and contact. So we'll make sure that works right, okay? And let's see, boom, there you go. So you can see it scrolling in the back, but our menu doesn't close. That's kind of a pain, right? So let's go ahead and fix that. And what we're gonna do <clears throat> on this list item here, we're just gonna add a uh, uh, arrow function, right? So, but I, what I'm gonna do, it's an on-click event, right? I'm gonna click on this uh, alt button because I don't want to do this uh, five times, okay? So that way, what we can say, on-click, instead of passing in a function, what I'm gonna do is just uh, pass in this arrow function, right? Instead of calling a function up top, we're gonna just pass in an arrow function, okay? And what I, all I wanna say is set nav, right? And the nav, where we're getting this, right, is our nav, our, that we're, this is what we, our state, right, for our nav, set nav, or toggle on nav bar. So all we want to do is set nav to false, Was there, and we don't have to use a uh, the logical um, um, operator here. All we have to do is set false because we never want to open this once it's already open, right? So let's click close, let's see. Now this should scroll us up to the top and close the menu. And there you go, looking good, you guys. Again, smash the like button if you feel like you're getting value out of this, okay. So now that we have that fixed up, that's just looking good, you guys. All right, now that we have that working, you guys, um, and just a real quick, a real quick tip, okay? Um, so we're using this link tag, right, for uh, for routing. If you wanna use uh, some external links, you can just use the standard A tag, just like that. If you wanna link this to, um, link the icons to like your own uh, LinkedIn or GitHub or anything like that, okay? So, all right, now that we have that out of the way, what are we doing next here? Our property, our pages, okay? So for our pages here, I'm just gonna design this page and what we're doing here, let's scroll down use our functionality here, scroll down to our projects, and this is what we're doing right here. Boom. This is what we're going to be designing right now. It's actually quite simple. It's not gonna be a whole lot of code. And then we'll just basically copy and paste it for our other projects, okay? So in here, I'm gonna have a this div here, I'll give it a class name. It's gonna say width full, okay? And that's it there. Now this next div, I'm gonna give this a class name, and I'm gonna say width screen, so 100% viewport width, okay? And then we're gonna say um, height, and for the height, I'm gonna say 30 VH, okay? 30, then anything above large, what well, I'm gonna say width is now, what am I gonna say? 40 VH, perfect, okay? And then we want this to be relative, okay? And also, I don't know if you notice this, but we don't have a background on our nav bar. Um, and back here, we're gonna actually set a background to our nav bar. So right now it's still transparent, which is gonna work fine on our property page. Again, if we go to property, it's gonna look fine, but we want to, uh, what's going on? Oh, we don't have anything in here right now. So that should be seen there. So that is what we're gonna do. 
that is uh, another little challenge that we're gonna face in here. So and I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So all right, and in here, what we wanna have is our overlay, okay? So we'll say div, and this one's gonna be class name of absolute. We want top zero, left, left zero. Width is gonna be full. Oh, left out the W there. Width is gonna be full. Now height, right? For height, we want it to be a 30 viewport height, right? Then anything above large, we want it the, the, the height to be 40 bh, just like we did right here, okay? And let's give it the background, bg, black, and then use our slash here so we can use the opacity of 80 and then Z10. So we now should see that, perfect. And this can actually be a self-closing div. We don't need to, to close that out so we're not gonna put anything in there since it's absolute, right? And uh, you should see our nav bar here. Um, the reason, I think I put it in our index folder. So let's go, whoops, we won't need to print that. Control P over here, index, there we go. And so our nav bar, we can actually cut that out of here because we don't want this just on our home uh, page, right? But on all our pages. So let's go in here to our app.js. And this is similar to the index.js and in just plain React, okay? So what we want to do here, instead of this returning that, we want to return fragment. And in here, we can return the, or sorry, we want the nav bar, okay? Go ahead and import that. And we want this to go just like so. Now go ahead and paste that. That's what we want right there. Make sure you have these, uh, the, the parentheses around there. So perfect, there you go. And we should have this, sorry. If we go back to homepage, it should be there as well. Perfect, Alrighty. So let's go back to our property page, right? So projects, we're just going to our property page. Perfect. And we can close that. We can close that index.js. So inside here, we're going to want our image, right? So image, image there. Okay. Alt, leave that in there. And for our image, uh, I'm going to give this source here. And for this source, we're actually going to bring in property image, right? Property. IMG like that. So we need to bring this in at the top, right? So property image import. I'm just going to call this property image from, and where are we going? Our public folder. And we're looking for our assets and then our projects. Okay. And we're looking for the, uh, this one's property. Uh, J. PG. Okay. Form full refresh. Should just be able to refresh that. And image is not defined. We're using the next image. Okay. So make sure you import next image. And we're going to give to give this some class name, but that is looking good right there, you guys. Boom. There you go. Let's just give it some class. Okay. So class name right there. And what we're going to say is the uh, absolute and Z dash one. And what we're also going to say here is this is where we're going to use layout fill okay and then object fit sorry camel case here object fit and we want that to be cover that way it'll maintain our aspect ratio there you go perfect now uh, it always maintains our aspect ratio except what is going on with that right there mm -hmm. so this right here I said width needs to be height there you go. All right. Sorry about that, you guys. And also, so you can see our links there. Okay. We want those to be white. And again, we don't want those to be white when we're on this page here. So we're going to toggle that. So don't worry about that right now, you guys. Don't worry about that. We're going to come back and fix that. Promise you. Okay. So underneath this image, right? Self-closing image there. Underneath that image, what we want to do is create a div. And inside this div. So next, what we're doing, so we can see what we're doing here. Next, what we're going to do is this rule right here and have this position absolutely right on top of our image, okay? So div, and let's just go ahead and say, for this, we want an h2, okay? And it's gonna say property finder. And these are hard-coded, we're not passing any properties in here, okay? And then also a h3, so we just have it nice and bold, react.js. We'll say tailwind and firebase. And if you want me to build this actually property finder, you guys, I'll show you how I built it. Um, so if you want to see that, just let me know in the in the comments. So let's go ahead and position this right so we can so we can see what we're doing. Right, let's go ahead and give this some styles. So class name two, I would say py two, okay, and then nothing on the bottom there. So we're already bold. And for this, I'm going to give it the class name and my absolute, okay, 
top, what we want to say is top will say 70%. Okay. Max width. You can give a little container around it just like everything else so it matches. And we'll say width full left. Whoa. Left 50%. Right 50%. And then we want to say translate, translate x negative 50%. And then we'll say, I'm going to shrink this down again. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then also we're going to say translate y. This is going to be negative 50%. Okay. So let's go ahead and refresh. That should be good there. Hey, there you go. Look at that. And when we get open, it should hit. There you go. It stays within our container. And the nav bar, we didn't place that inside a container, okay? So that's why it goes. I want that display further out. So that is what we want right there, you guys. Looking good. Uh, probably just add in a uh, text white there. We want that to be white. Hey. Oh, we need to add a Z index to that probably too. Um, this is poking out down a little bit low. So uh, let's say, mm, let's say Z10. Let me get a little padding too. And there we go. Look at that. That is, man, that looks good. Smash the like button, you guys. I know you like it. Smash the like button. So next, what we're going to do here. Uh, so let's do, get underneath here. We're going to go um, below this div, right? So this right here is our absolutely positioned div there. So the next, what we're going to do, next div here. And we're going to place this inside of our, this is going to be like container div, right? So class name, we'll say, Max width 1240 pixels. There we go. And we'll say MX auto P 2 grid medium. We want to say grid call, whoa, grid columns five. Okay, perfect. Gap of eight and padding top eight. Perfect. There you go. Now for here, div, and we're going to say column span. Four. There we go. Now for our text, we're going to save that for our text. Okay. P tag. And what we're doing here is this project, then the overview. Okay. So P tag here. I want to say uh, project. Okay. Project. And then we have our H2. It's so just going to say overview. Perfect. And then our P tag just below that. And I'm just going to copy in. This is just a little <clears throat> excerpt I wrote about this project. So if you want to read it, feel free. It's kind of, I think it's a good idea whenever you build a project, it's good to kind of list out some things. You can list out um, why you enjoy doing it, why you chose that project, what you learned in that project, any obstacles you had to overcome, like programming wise. So a very, very good idea to add that in there, in my opinion. So <clears throat> next we're going to have below that div, um, we're going to have our two buttons, right? So button. And remember, we already did a lot of this for our, for our um, already did a lot of this uh, in our global styles, right? For our buttons. So as you can see there, so I'm gonna hold down all so we can type both places here and we'll say px8 okay and then py2 mt4 and then just on this top one here i'm gonna say margin right of eight and let's see that looks good perfect so let's add our little box over here that's looking good though perfect perfect <clears throat> so underneath there let's add our box right so it's gonna be one more div over here on the side Div here and in here. Okay, we're gonna get a class name. And this is gonna be calm span four. Then anything medium. What we're gonna say is a call call span one. Okay, and then shadow of XL shadow gray four hundred rounded XL P dash four. Okay, perfect, perfect. And here div and this is gonna be just a class name P two. Okay. Well, not one, two, okay. And here, we're gonna have a P tag, okay. And this is gonna say technologies. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and underneath the P tag, what we're gonna wanna say is a div, right? Div, and then we're gonna say, this is gonna be a grid, okay. So let's say, in here we're gonna have a P tag, and this is gonna say React Tailwind JavaScript. Oh, I left out a uh, an icon there. Oh, there it is. Just couldn't see it. This is on small device. Cool, cool. So let's add that right there. Perfect. <clears throat> so 
So technologies inside here, I'm going to have the RI radio fill, sorry, radio button fill. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and close that off. And if it's going to let me, I'll go ahead and auto import it and it won't. So let's just copy that. Okay. Go ahead and copy that and let's go in up here and we'll import, let's paste that in from, we're looking for react icons slash RI. I'm sure you probably know that by now should be export and importing, uh, export uh, importing react icons. Okay. So there we go. And for this one, I'm going to say, I'm going to keep them all the same here. React. Okay. React. There we go. Perfect. So boom, there you go. So let's add some, some, some styling here. So let's do our technologies first. Okay. So I'm just going to give class name text center font bold padding bottom two. Okay. Now for the div, this is going to be surrounding or let's go, let's go ahead and uh, style these here. So for the radio fill button, I'm just going to give class name, <clears throat> uh, text gray 600 P Y two flex. And then we want the items to be center. That way these are just kind of side by side and, um, centered there, um, uh, horizontally and vertically there. Perfect. Now for our div or for our icon gets class name. And I'm just going to say, um, padding right of one, just so there's a little bit of a space there. Ah, there we go. Perfect. This makes it perfect. And you could use margin, right? But I'm going to use padding. So <clears throat> that's what we want right there. Now in here, I'm just going to drop, I'm going to copy that there. Okay. I'm going to drop that down a few times. You probably see it populate. Boom, 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 boom. But I want to change this. So react this next one is going to be tailwind. Okay. And this one is going to be, we'll say JavaScript and then Firebase. Firebase. Oh shit. There we go. <clears throat> Google API. And let's just copy this down one more time. And this one will say Zillow API. Perfect. Just like that. Perfect. Now what we want to do, uh, it's not going to display properly. Oh, hey, there it goes. Perfect. That's what we want. Yeah. <clears throat> let's have a look. I think that's all we need right there. Boom, that goes back to the page, projects, scrolls down. Boom, there we go. Make sure it displays properly. Looking good. Look at that, you got, oh, this is the wrong one. <laughs> sorry. All right, you guys, sorry about that. Projects, and make sure this displays properly. <clears throat> and notice, okay, you guys, another thing I had real quick, let me show you. So a lot of people were asking me on a previous video how we we're doing, uh, how do you navigate to a page and then scroll down, okay? And if you notice, we're on our property page right here. So say, hey, we wanna go back to our, uh, we wanna go to the contact page, right? So if we go click on our menu, can't really see it, we're gonna change that though. Click on contact, how do we make it not only go to the home page, right? But also scroll down, and that's really simple. Boom. And that is why we did, if we look at our nav bar, why we did the slash and then the, uh, the, the number sign there. Okay. Right. Then we added the ID. So make sure you do slash first. Otherwise you won't be able to go down to the, uh, to the contact page or wherever you're trying to section of the document you're looking for. So what we want to do is actually have that display just like that, um, on mobile devices. So let's go back into our property here. Now for this div right there. Okay. For the div, is real easy. Give class name, we'll say grid, and then uh, <clears throat> grid columns three, there you go. And then medium, anything above medium, we'll say grid columns one. So let's have a look. Refresh, shouldn't get any errors, that's perfect. And we scroll up past uh, medium, it should just be one column, and shoots right there on the right, perfect. And we want to add a little back button, right? Kind of how we did right there. So we can add that in. I'm going to just drop this down a little bit. Perfect. Just like that. And where we want to add this back button is just at the very end. So I'm just going to put this um, right here. Okay. And I'm just going to say a link here and href. Okay. Href. That looks good. And just like that. And this is just going to be back. Uh, <clears throat> we'll say back. There we go. And I'll actually want to, uh, we'll put it this in the P tag, okay? Class name and underline cursor pointer, okay? Link is not defined, that's all right. Import it, there we go. Now, should shoot us back. 
back there. There we go. But hey, what if we wanted to have, just real quick, what if we wanted, like you said, to go down to the project section? So if we're looking at this and we say back, do we really want to go to the back of the homepage or do we want to go back to the product section? So let's just try that. Hey, <clears throat> hey, projects. And this should be how we get back to, uh, get rid of that. There we go. Should scroll us down to the projects section. There you go. Hey, smash that like button, you guys, if you like this. And that is, okay, let's go back. <clears throat> I want to finish a couple more things here. Let's go back and add our other pages, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this entire page, okay? Just copy the entire thing. And um, in our pages, let's create our other pages. So I'm going to have a uh, crypto page, crypto.jsx. There we go. And again, interchangeable. You see that index comes... Um, right out of the box from Next.js as .js, so it doesn't really matter. And so I'm just gonna paste this over, boom, paste that over, and a few changes here, not property, but crypto, crypto, okay. And and here, we wanna take and see crypto IMG, and we'll just have to change this here as well. Crypto IMD, just like that, and we're looking for crypto, boom, there we go. And where else are we looking here? Project. Oh, I, I misspelled that other on this property. It's going to bother me if I don't change that. There we go. And I'm just going to copy in. Um, I'm just going to copy in my other ones here just because I don't want to type it all out. So this is the crypto app, right? So crypto. Oops. Let's paste this in just like so. Perfect. There we go. Okay. Go ahead and save that. It gets nice and formatted. Okay. And what else we're we replacing here? I'm going to leave all these the same. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and have a look and make sure we're on the right one. Projects. Okay. <clears throat> so when we click on the crypto, it should. Property finder. It didn't take us the right one. And that's the, let's hear. On our, let's go to our projects. We probably just need to update that. So, okay, remember we left everything at the property destination. So this one is going to be crypto, okay? And this one, we'll just say Netflix. This one, Twitch. Now we don't have a Twitch or a Netflix yet, so that's okay, don't worry about that. <clears throat> so projects and crypto, we'll see if we have any errors. Probably, oh, we need to export it. So let's go down here, export. We wanna export crypto because that is our functional component. Okay, that's what we're exporting, our functional component there. And let's see if we have any errors now. Perfect, and we just need to change that. You can see our background's correct, right? Background's looking right. But let's go back to our project so we can actually pass through. Let's see, that looks right, okay. And th that's for our project item, so we're done with that actually. So in here, we'll just change that to, we'll say, crypto app, something like that. And I actually built that with uh, React.js, Tailwind, and Firebase. There's a back end to that crypto project. So if you want to see that, we do um, the spark lines, everything. I'm going to do all that. And uh, I did that in React.js. So if you want to see that, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll throw up a video of that. So I'm not going to connect these buttons. Uh, I actually do have this hosted, but I'm not going to show it to you right now. Uh, and then you can just put a link to your GitHub like, or something like that. Okay. So now that we did that, let's just, uh, I'm going to copy this one more time and let's just do the same thing. Uh, for our other pages. So let's create our netflix.jsx, okay? And we'll just paste that. And in here, we're gonna want the Netflix IMG, okay? And Netflix, and the reason I say IMG is for one, I know it's an image, and two, um, <clears throat> since this right here is actually called Netflix, we, we, you can't have an image that's imported the same thing, right? You're gonna get some errors here. So that's why you always wanna kind of be a little bit more specific with the image on the background or on the back end, just like that. And we'll say Netflix, Netflix app, something like that. Okay, cool. And I'm just gonna go back to my Netflix app. Mm -hmm. Netflix UI is what I said, that's cool though. So I'm just gonna paste that in here what I typed in about that and technologies, all that can stay the same. And we want to import, export Netflix. But we didn't use the, I'm gonna get rid of that in Google. What I use on these here, what I say? I just, I left them all the same. That's cool, don't worry about that. <clears throat> Not the important part of this tutorial here. So, so that works for Netflix. And now let's do the same thing, right? For our last one, let's do twitch.jsx. So 
Uh, actually, don't even bother with RFC. Let's go ahead and paste that. Let's control A, just you know, or Command A if you're on a Mac. Uh, copies everything at once. So if you're wondering how I do that, somebody asked. If they mentioned that they like me uh, mentioning these little shortcuts that I use. So there you have it. Twitch, perfect. And we'll save this to Twitch. And this is going to be the Twitch IMG Twitch UI. Perfect, perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and add in my my little. Yeah, it don't really matter. I'm going to leave it there. And <clears throat> let's say export. We want to export as Twitch because that is our function. Okay. So let's see if this works. Let's go to our projects. I'm just going to open it up. So our property finder, that's good. Correct image there. Crypto app, we have our right image. Crypto app, perfect. That looks good. And our oh property finder, I need to change that one. And we change that. That is on our see, property it's projects, right? Crypto app, this would be Netflix UI or app, Netflix app, and this one would be Twitch. I didn't catch that. You guys are probably roasting me in the comments already. Twitch UI, perfect. Okay, that's what we want right there, you guys. Now let's go back and just double check. Property Finder, next. That is our Netflix app, perfect. Let's go back and our Twitch should be our Twitch. Ah, oh, perfect. That is looking good, you guys looking good i hope you like it smash the like button if you get into value out of this but we have do have one more thing to address and that is this uh our our uh, nav bar here so on our home page i actually want this right now we don't have a background on our nav bar right and i actually want our background to be the same color as our home page However, this poses uh, an issue because when we go to our projects page, um, we don't want that same background. We actually want a transparent background, right? So let's go ahead and fix that right now, you guys. All right, you guys. So how are we going to fix that? Let's go into our navbar.jsx, okay? And we're actually going to add in some more state, okay? So what we're going to say here, we'll say const, and we're going to have, um, we'll say, what's this? Uh, nav background, nav bg, set nav bg just like that equal to use state and we're going to pass in it's going to be a string right but it's going to be a color code so hex code is going to be one let's see uh, sorry ecf zero f three okay just like that perfect and also we're going to have a, a link color right so const we'll say link color and then set link set link color just like that okay equal to use state and this is going to be that uh, black color which is one f one F two nine three seven. Perfect. Okay. And then next, what we're going to do is actually import the use router from next router. Okay. So import and it's just going to be use router from let's see next slash router. Okay. That's what we want right there. And we just needed to find that so we can use it. So const, um, we'll say router equal to use router. Okay. And this is a method. So let's add in some logic, okay? And we're gonna wrap this in a use effect. So let's just put our use effect there. It's gonna take in an arrow function. And instead of an empty dependency array, if we wanna just, this just run one time whenever the component mounts, which we don't want that, what we want is actually run this every time the route changes. So we'll just pass in router, just like that. And then next, okay, in here, let's have our if statement, okay? So if, I'm gonna give me, myself some space there. So if, and we'll say router dot as path, Okay, equal to, we'll say, slash property. Then we use our, our operator, right, or operator. Let's just copy this down a few times here. We don't need that on the last one. So, and or this one is, uh, what's our next one? Crypto, there we go. And, or Netflix, or Twitch. So, and these are the routes, right? These are the routes that we have in our pages right here, okay? So what we're saying, what we're saying is if router as path is equal to property, or crypto or Netflix or Twitch, if all that, what we want to say is set nav BG, okay? And what we want to set that to is, let's see here, we want to set that to transparent, right? So whenever on any of these pages, we want to set the nav BG to transparent. 
and we're going to set the link color. We're going to set this link color to, um, we'll say F8, 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 which is pretty close to, to this right here. Okay. So that looks good. In fact, let's just copy this out. There we go. Okay. Um, else what we're going to do is set nav BG. Okay. To, um, to our, uh, this color. Okay. Ah, there we go. And then we'll, uh, set link color, set link color, and we'll use this black color right there. So just a little quick recap, our use effect is running one time whenever the route changes. And basically what we're saying is if the route is um, the property, crypt or crypto or Netflix or Twitch, set the background as transparent and the link as the white color, right? Otherwise, set an FPG as this cream color with the black uh, text, right? Um, so how do we implement this? Okay. So let's go down here into our first div here. Okay. This this div right here and this first div, this is our nav bar, right? This is a parent container for our nav bar and we don't have a background in here. So what we can just say style, this is just inline styling for uh next JS or react. It's the same thing. Okay. And we're actually going to have two, two curly brackets, right? To write our styles. And what we'll say is, um, background. Okay. It's just background, just like that. Okay. Background color. And this is going to be in back ticks. Okay. And we'll just say, just like that, nav BG, just like that, perfect, nav BG, okay, and we're going to do the same thing for our links, for our unordered list right here, okay, so what we'll say here is style, open this up, and what we're going to say is uh, color, right, and let's use our back ticks. Sorry, there we go. And template literal there. So that's where we use our back ticks. We can use our template literal, right? Pass in our values, dynamic values. And this will just say link color. Let's have a look. So as we scroll down, this should, there you go. So now you can see, since we're not on, since we're not on either, either one of these paths, we now have a background, right? Okay, perfect. So that's looking good. Now, moment of truth here. Let's see if it works. When we click on a property or any one of our projects, it should be transparent. Let's cross your fingers. And <laughs> look at that transparent background and the links are showing. So let's, let's pop that open full screen here. Boom. There you go. All right, you guys, let's just do a quick rundown here. We have our nav, we have smooth scrolling right here. Nice hover effect on our icons there about page using skills. We're using Flexbox. We're using grid in here projects, lots of little, little issues we're running to. I was able to, to work past these here. So looking very good. You guys, I hope you liked this project. If you did make sure you smash that like button. I'm going to be putting out some more, some more content and react JS next JS, just like this. This is the first next JS project I released. I'm going to be doing a couple more here. And if you want to see any of these projects, I did the Netflix build and I'm going to drop a link to that in the description below. But if you want to see this Twitch build, uh, this crypto build with routes and all of these are using Firebase for the back end. So if you want to see, I built any of these then please let me know in the comments below, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. You guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.